media mode. Covers your story. Your story will be covered in the ground up. All right, we're back for an all new show. I'm happy about this one because, you know, I told you I like talking to my friends. Now I get to talk to a friend of mine who's not only successful in television and film, but she's here to promote nothing because <laughs> she can't. She's on strike. Welcome, Yvette Nicole Brown. Woo! To the Ghost of the show. This is, you know, I got all these cards, but I'm like, why look at the cards? We can't talk about nothing. But we can talk, you and I can always talk. So it is not, it's just never been about promoting stuff with you and I anyway, so we're gonna be fine. No, this is what I love about Yvette. So Yvette is really black. When I talk, we're not talking about black, we're talking about black, really, black. she stands, she with the people, mm -hmm. she with the culture. Um, and I remember in my last interview with you, you came into the studio wearing a hoodie that we were selling. This was before we really had the visibility that we yeah, have now. Yeah, and I don't think you and I had even met. I was a fan of yours and I was, I was proud of you and rooting for you. And I like to sew into people's businesses and what they're building. So I went to your website and bought a hoodie and I wore the hoodie to to the to the thing. And today, before I leave, I'm going to buy some stuff. I know you got merch back there. I'm going to buy something. No, we'll, we'll give you some stuff. But let, <laughs> here's the deal. Thank God that the Shopify worked. Because could you imagine if that Nicole <laughs> Brown went to go support a black business but couldn't get the black merch? So I just want to say publicly, thank you so much for always my giving pleasure. me my flowers, supporting us, supporting black-owned businesses. And it's not just me. I always see you promoting everybody. Um, why don't we do more of that? You know, I think some of us believe the myth that there's not enough to go around. And I think they believe that if if they give, then that means they're diminishing themselves. I think I said last time we talked, um, a candle loses nothing by lighting another, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So if I use my social media pages to talk about your show or to talk about another actor's show or a friend that's a writer, what do I lose? Mm -hmm. it, why wouldn't I help people do better? Now, is that Leo mentality? Because I didn't even realize that you were Leo. I'm Leo. I think it's, I think it's East Cleveland. I think it's Cleveland mentality. Like we, it's rough there. We got to stick together. That's so why I you think know that's I'm what it is. Also. I didn't know this. What's your You're birthday? You're August 12th. Yes, what's I'm yours? August 16th. This is what. This that's is what why. Saying. This that's is why saying. it is. This, this might be why we we're kindred though. Like this is why I really like. I've liked you from the beginning. Like yeah. I just think you're delicious. Well, thank you. Yeah. Listen, I recently saw. Um, so we're talking about what we can't promote because Yvette <laughs> is here. I, I wanted her to be here, and I wanted to dedicate a show to talk about something that I'm passionate about. I mean, I, as most of you that have been following my career know, before entertainment, I served as a labor leader for SEIU for 11 years, the California uh, California Nurse Association for a year. And I understand fundamentally the purpose of unions. And Yvette is on the national board for SAG-AFTRA. As you know, they're in a strike. So all your favorite shows, every fav every favorite episode that you can recall, you will not see another until the strike is over because the actors, the writers, and everybody in the first time in over 60 years are now on strike. Fighting for what? Fighting for food and healthcare. Like I, I, the idea that this is a bunch of fat cats and rich and famous people just duking it out over their new yachts, that's not what this is. This is literally the rank and file actors and the rank and file writers who are living at the poverty line. A lot of actors, most of the actors, because 98% of the actors are not working. We don't, the business is not set up for everybody to be a superstar and to be rich. There's somebody that has to say, here's your coffee, the doctor will see you now in a television show or a movie. And we're fighting for those people to have what they need. And so we're gonna dedicate a lot of today's conversation about it and we're gonna have some people join us because it's not just the famous stars like mm -hmm. Yvette that you know, it's the people behind the scenes, it's the people running the shows, and there's people that look like us that are running shows and that's, we're the very, minor Lowest number of level. people, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It's not a lot of us. Right. And so to be a black showrunner, because one of your friends is going to be here later, yeah. that's a big deal. It is. And and I think don't, people don't realize how hard it is to get to that level and then to fight your way up through the ranks and finally get a show and you created it and you're the showrunner and then a strike happens. It's like that feeling of like, oh gosh, I was so close. So what's important, I hope doing this show, um, those that are watching you guys, I hope that you will continue to support the shows that you love when we get to come back. Yeah. Um, and celebrate what we do. So And make sure when you follow this whole conversation that you're cutting clips and putting all over social media. I know we go viral on TikTok every day, Facebook, whatever. Make sure you're sharing it because the only way that you get information out in order to get a result or an outcome yeah. that we're hopefully all wanting to see with our favorite shows being able to come back is by spreading the word. That's right. And that's your job. Okay. So the fact that you're even outside is crazy because... <laughs> You know I don't go outside. I would call Yvette like, hey, you want to come to this? You want to come to that? And you were deathly afraid of COVID. I'm still deathly afraid. Listen, you want to know how deathly afraid of COVID I am? 
in my pocket. Wait, so you, COVID had you in the house? COVID had, well, I'm, listen, I'm an introvert anyway, so let's not act like it's just COVID. They call me the brown recluse. That's what my friends call me. I really don't be in them streets like that. I really don't. I like to be home. I like to be with if my Janet dog. Janet Jackson is anywhere. I'll, I'll go where Janet is. That's what I'm saying. So you, you do come outside. <laughs> I come outside so rarely, but this I ran into you at um, uh, Essence Fest last year, yeah. and you and and th to your credit, you did not clown me because you had been <laughs> inviting me places, and I kept saying no. And then Janice performed me. Oh, you going? But you gonna come for Janet? Well, well, you I expected I expect, if I, exactly. anybody was gonna be there. It was gonna be you. <laughs> yeah, I love Janet, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm just you know I'm kind of a quiet person. I know I, I'm in entertainment, but I'm really kind of quiet. But no, but your reason for me was a was a big deal is you were taking care of your father. Yeah, my dad has dementia and and also COVID, you know, he's 81. I'm like I can't bring something mm -hmm. back to daddy. So that was the main reason. So how did you survive COVID? I mean, did you cuz I had mental health issues develop over COVID. I was confined in my apartment. You're an extrovert though. I'm an extrovert. You in them streets. I'm in the streets. I, I, I defy you to find one introvert that was bothered by, by the pandemic at all. Introverts were living their best lives. I didn't have to go anywhere. I didn't have to turn down any invitations. I didn't have to get on. I didn't have to put on pants. Like it was literally. So you were okay with just staying in the house? Oh my God, are you kidding me? I could be by myself in a house for months and wouldn't feel it. But Leos aren't typically introverts though. I'm like, I don't know. I'm just, I, I don't, I can, now you know, you see me out. I can turn on the, I like people. So I'm an introvert that likes people, but I don't like a lot of people around me. Mm. I got to be by myself. Okay, so the, but see, for me, because I'm an extrovert mm -hmm. and because and my really mind are. is always racing on mm -hmm. opportunity, got to do this, got to do that, it slowed me all the way down where yeah. I literally thought I was going Which crazy. Which you probably need it. You need, you, you are always, and listen, that's why we have this. You've yeah. built this wonderful thing because the way your mind works. But you are going to have to find a way to sit down and calm down sometime. Mm. Ankle. At some <laughs> point, you're going to have to learn how to just sit it down. She's referencing my ankle because I, I had too much um, to drink the and, other night. And I was performing at, at a club yes, on the stage. Yes, and? And I fell off the stage. And then you did not do what? Well, I didn't go to the doctor. Did not go to a doctor. No, I didn't go to the doctor because I, you know, I did what my grandma would have did. I gave me some Tussle. Some, got me some Vicks. Some Vicks vapor rub. Yeah, and I rubbed that vape, <laughs> that, that, that Vicks vapor. And I'm okay now. At You're going to go now. to a doctor, Jason. You got to go. This, I, I'm not, I'm older than you, but as we get older, our bodies don't go back together I'm like refusing they to accept getting older. AI is out here. Did you Yo, not see the photo on my Instagram? I just lost 10 years <laughs> from that photo. Tell but, them bones in your foot. But the reality is our bodies do... Yes. You know, our mind, I don't know, you're a little older than me, but we're the same age mm -hmm. pretty much. Does your, why does the mind not catch up with the body or the body not catch up with the mind? Because my mind feels like. Oh, I feel 17. Right. I feel 17. But every time I wake up and I have to talk to my back, before, <laughs> listen, now, now knees and back, you with me? Yeah. We're going to go to the bathroom. We're you with this, me? We're going to do this we're together. Gonna do this together. Yeah. You know, so you got to have a little conversation with them. But yeah, it's. I love that I'm still youthful in my mind, but I am very mindful. Because speaking of falling, I fell. I fell like two years two years ago. Janet Jackson and New Edition <laughs> were in Kentucky. See, it's always it's Janet. always Janet. It's always Janet. Okay, so they were in Kentucky. New Edition too. So they were in Kentucky, and I'm like, and I'm talking to Jimmy Jam. Let me just drop that name right quick because I can't believe he's my friend. So I'm talking to Jimmy Jam, and I said, "Are you going to Kentucky?" He said, "Absolutely." This is the first time I get to hear 50 songs I wrote in one concert. I'm going. I'm like, if Jimmy going, I gotta go. <laughs> so I didn't bought like this last minute ticket. I'm flying to Kentucky. I'm so excited. We're hanging out with Janet Tyler Perry, and we having a great time. So we're outside, the show is happening, and the sign language lady is killing it, Jason. She's just, she's do, 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 she doing it. Wait, like, Rhythm Nation? I, well, I don't even know what song she was doing. I think it was New Edition doing a, a Can You Stand the Rain, I think. And she's just killing it, right? And I'm like, this needs to be documented. Someone needs to see her work ethic. So I turn on, I think my, I don't know if I did my video or Instagram live, and I'm walking over to her, and it's in slow motion, because they hadn't taped down some cables, Jason. Next thing I know... I'm falling. I see Jimmy Jam's face. He's like, no. <laughs> it's like the bounty it's commercial. slow motion, too. Oh, my God. And I landed on this shoulder, jacked up my knee, and landed on this shoulder. It's still not okay. Wait, so you fell, fell. I fell. And wait, did people see you? I think they did. There's probably video of it. And I remember I remember Jimmy helped me up. And I said, Jimmy, why weren't you laughing? Because I thought the fall was epic. And he was like, Yvette, when young people fall, it's funny. When old people fall, it's scary. <laughs> right. Yeah, because you could have got up and your arm could have still been on the floor. <laughs> my arm is but still you're not old. My arm still is in Kentucky because this, this shoulder still ain't right. So I'm saying you got to go to the doctor because I didn't go. You got to go. You might remember. Well, I'm praying on my foot. I do think this is going to be okay. But I will say, though, I am being more mindful yeah. of maybe not even getting on the stage when I've been drinking. You know, I have no business being up there. I think you that might be yeah, good for you. Yeah, because most be things to happen to you when you're doing something you're not, you're not supposed, supposed to, to be doing. That's right. So your affection for Janet Jackson came from where? Because Beyonce is the only artist I've ever flown. I flew from Hawaii mm -hmm. 
to, I want to say Nashville, mm -hmm. which was the only time I've ever been in Nashville, to see. But there's not many artists I would fly to go see. Why Janet? Why? What is your affection you know for Janet? Janet is, and I love that I'm getting to talk about her because I just love her so much. When I was growing up in, as a kid, 70s, there weren't anybody that looked like us. It was Janet and Kim Fields. You done. And Janet and Kim, but we're talking about Janet, Janet just looked like me. Like she looked like a little black girl from the Midwest. And she was a little black girl from the Midwest. And so I got to see myself doing great things. She was singing, she was on television shows, and she also was a Jackson, like mm -hmm. that's so cool. And um, I just always felt like, and you know, you have, probably have people like this too, I'm like, if she ever met me, we, we'd be friends. Right, right. She'd be my friends, and we're friends now. Like I feel like we. what I thought, what I saw in her all those years is actually true. She's a good person, she's kind, um, she's funny, she's all of those things. Wait, so how did you all become friends? So I was doing the show The Real, guest co-hosting, and it was around the time Janet had her residency in Vegas. And I was talking about how much I loved Janet and how much, and, and the real producers um, got me tickets to go to the, the meet and greet. And then they sent a camera with me. So the first time I meet Janet Jackson, I'm on camera in this episode of The Real, and I'm crying like, like, <laughs> it was really bad. She and then was, you stayed for the birthday? And I stayed for the birthday party. And then when did you guys exchange numbers? Then? She, we didn't exchange numbers. This is how good, this is how kind Janet is. So, and I, I have her permission to share this. I was in Ireland doing Disenchanted. My mother passed. And the night my mother passed, I'm like in this strange city, crying my eyes out. It's apartment, no, no one's there, I'm nine hours ahead. My phone rings, I pick it up, number I don't know. I go, hello, Yvette? Yes, it's Janet. We were on the phone for two hours. She's talking to me about grief, talking to me about life. And that was the first time we ever had a conversation. And I'm like, she can get a kidney. Mm. Anybody that's gonna find me in an Ireland apartment building, at like 11 o'clock at night on my darkest day. And this is somebody who's typically private and perceivably not touchable. She is so accessible. And the best thing about her is that she's kind. Mm. She is, I don't think she has a bad bone in her body. And I say that about all the Jacksons. They all are lovely people. And she got my number from Taj, um, Tito's son. He and I are friends. He found out my mother passed and he said, Yvette needs you, you need to call her. Mm. And she did. Okay, so, um, but that's a great story. And it's good to, it's good when you meet somebody that you love so much yeah. and they are, they're everything you expect them to yeah. be. Yeah, Kim Fields is also really lovely too. Like it's, this is the thing. There are people, and you know this, there are people in Hollywood that are Hollywood, right? And then there's people that are in Hollywood that just happen to work in Hollywood. And I gravitate towards the people that just happen to work in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. I don't like the fake stuff. I don't like the, anybody that acts like they're more important than someone else. We all human beings, you know, we're just blessed to do what we do in front of a camera. And it looks like your friendship with Janet is so genuine that you all just love each other. But I love how you show her her flowers all the time because I feel oftentimes people, for whatever reason, don't want to do that. I, I don't understand it. Like, this is the thing. I celebrate the character of people more than I celebrate what they do. We, a lot of people can be rich, a lot of people can be cute, a lot of people can have the nice shoe on, whatever the important shoe is. But are you a decent person? Do you see people? Do you care about people? Do you love people? If you're someone like that, I will use everything I have to make sure people know that about you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so it's, and, and everybody knows I'm a fan. So it's not like it's weird for me to talk about Janet. I'm a huge fan. I've been a fan since I was six years old. Mm. So. You know, I've got, and there's nothing wrong with being a fan. There's, there's nothing, and this, and this is the thing too that people forget. I'm also a nerd. I'm a blurred. I'm a black nerd. All a nerd is is somebody that loves stuff so much. Yeah. And so I, that carries. I do. I feel that way about Lego. I feel that way about Janet. I feel that way about you. If I love it, I'm going to do everything I can. But where does humanity it? get lost in just loving and celebrating art? Like mm -hmm. I, I feel like if I talk too much about somebody, they say, "Oh, he's a fan." Yeah. What's, yeah. What's, what's I, wrong, what's wrong with, that? with that? There's nothing wrong with it. I think it's beautiful. And the more you do it and the more I do it, the more people have um, have uh, have permission to do it themselves. Now, this is the thing, though. Don't be a toxic fan. Like, don't yeah. be the kind of fan where, because I don't think Janet or anyone else would want us hurting people. Don't be swarm. Yeah. Don't be swarm. Don't be don't the be show. Swarm. Don't be swarm. So you don't want... Um, to harm people in the name of your of your person. I think mm. that's mean. Yeah. You know, so. You know, but I do want us to get to a, a healthier place where we could just love on each other, right. celebrate each other. And I feel like there's so many people that just don't have a lot of self-love that they don't know how to give it away. Right. Because they don't have it for themselves. Right. And also, listen, we're, we, we, we are taught as black people in the world that there's not enough to go around. And when you believe that, that's when you start to get really tight and seeing a problem and a, an enemy over every shoulder. I don't think most people wake up trying to destroy other people. Mm. I think that it just, 
social media gets people all egged on and people want to be the cool kids. And so if everybody's bouncing on Jason, I'm a bounce on Jason. I just think it's toxic and not cool. It's, it's, it's cool to love. It's cool to be nice. It's cool to care about people. At least I tried it. That's how I try to live my life. You know, back in the day when bullies would bully people at school, mm. somebody would step up to the bully. Yeah. Who is the bully police on social media? Do, do they exist? I'm kind of a bully police on Are social media. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going oh, yeah, to get into some I'll, I'll throw some elbows. <laughs> I believe in, th I, like I said, I say all the time, good trouble. You got to get in good trouble. We, none of us, you have not been given this, Jason. And, and we, I want to talk about the Impact Awards because of this. You were not given all of this just so you could be great and take trips and whatever. What are you doing with what God gave you? What are you, where are you shining the light that is on you? Mm -hmm. All of this is for a purpose. You've already made the Jason Lee name great. Now what's, what is next that you're going to make great right. that is outside of you? So that's why it's important to speak up when people are doing crazy things or people aren't being kind because we are our brother and sister's keeper. And I think for some reason we think that our brothers and sisters are our adversaries and it's not. We're supposed to help each other. Life is hard, especially for us. Right. You know? We don't need to make it harder. No. So the, the award she's talking about, the third annual Hollywood Unlocked Impact, Impact Awards. Impact Awards. As you all know, we created that show because, or we created that platform because uh, I was denied access to the VMAs. Mm -hmm. And I was on MTV and VH1, didn't understand that. Uh, and you know, I know I said it was a white woman over there that told me I couldn't go, which I didn't understand why she was the gatekeeper to the culture. And I said, you know what, if I can't find a seat at your table, I'll build my I'll own. Build so I built table. the award show. The intent was to be able to honor people that drive culture but aren't pushing mainstream. It's not mm -hmm. about them pushing and promoting mainstream. Yvette, I was happy to see uh, she <laughs> left her, her COVID-free home. <laughs> to come out in public with a bunch of us at oh, the Beverly Hilton Hotel. I was very intentional about taking it in a space where the culture doesn't mm -hmm. exist mm -hmm. uh, and uh, showing them that we can exist there too. But it was your first experience. I was happy to see you and Jill Marie Jones, who's a friend on the mm -hmm. right there by the red carpet. What was your thoughts on what, what you Well, attended? first I would like to say, and this is where it's gonna to shift to, I'm the interviewer, because I, first of all, always so proud of you. What you built, and this is the thing, the, the that, Ballroom has been the Golden Globes. I've been to so many different award shows. You can tell the money put in by the way the room look. It it's the same lot. room. A lot of money. It's a lot of money. Yeah. I, a lot of money. So you put the money in and you you put the money in for us, right? Uh, Kamala Harris, Vice President Kamala Harris pops up on a video to, to <laughs> say congratulations to you. Whoopi Goldberg is saying great things. It is, it's, this is what I always feel about when God blesses you. When you turn the blessing back around, it can't help but then turn back around. And what I saw in you that day was a mature man, a um, accomplished man, a principled man, a smart man, and you used every opportunity you had on that carpet and up on that stage to shine the light back, right? And I think that that is such an amazing thing. And I, I had to be there this year because you've asked me so many other years and I was like, COVID is waning, so then I can't use the COVID, yeah. you know what I mean? And I was like, I'm going to take my mask, I'm going to put my dress on, and I'm going to go support Jason. And yeah. so that's why I came out. No, it was a special night. I was glad you were able to see it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I remember vividly walking from or to the stage and seeing you, and you were like, you were like basically saying, great job, yes. as I was walking. And you sent a thoughtful text afterwards. Um, when we were putting the show together, I remember I was thinking about names, names, names. And mm -hmm. I had to catch myself to say, it's not always all about, about how big the names That's are. Right. It's about how big the service has been. There it's it about the contribution. There it is. Because sometimes we get caught up in social media and this person's this, this, that, that when I was able to watch it back, now that we're editing it, it I'm very proud of the yeah. work that we did. Yeah. But I was saying to you off camera, I didn't get to, a chance to really enjoy the experience. And why? And why is this? Why do you... Well, this is what I think it is, because every time I saw you, you were focused on the experience yeah. for other people. Yeah. So do they have the hors d'oeuvres coming out now? Y'all better drink that wine. That wine, it got the good wine. Make sure you look at the center. Like you were, I saw you just like this, do, 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 do. It was the whole night, the whole, No, it was the whole yeah, night. Yeah. I never saw you, I, I think I saw one camera angle of you sitting there smiling and clapping, but everything, because you, you created it. Yeah. So I understand that, but I hope you get to the point where you can start to switch that part off. Yeah. For the two hours. Yeah. But the one thing, I, the reason why I wanted to bring it up is because what was most important about that night is that it's black owned. Yes. And I feel like, again, real freedom is ownership yep. and creating it. How important is, I know you've been supportive of black brands and mm -hmm. not just my brand, but other black brands. Like, how important is ownership and people creating their own 
freedom. Ownership is everything. You know, it's it's we'll, we'll talk about this later with the strike, but it's kind of why we're all fighting because the things that the writers created and the things that the actors bring into these performances and create, we we don't get any profit participation for the most part for it. Um, and it's not fair. If you, I believe that art and creativity is divine. I feel like it's God deciding I'm going to let Yvette do this or I'm going to let Jason do this. And so if he chose us to do it and he gave us his greatness to make something wonderful, his goal, I mean, the Bible even says, if you don't work, you don't eat. I, I worked. I'd like to eat. That part. Like to eat. So Tyrese was at the event. You had a um, social media thing with Tyrese back in the day. Did, Did y'all I? Get to talk? I don't Did remember he, this. What did where I he posted, well, this was a long time ago, where he posted off about... Um, uh, he he tweeted, or he recalled a tweet about him wondering if his wife was on social media. Rev Run had said, the problem is uh -huh. most men aren't looking for a wife on social media. And, and then, I said, the problem is most people, most men ain't looking for a wife. Right. But that's true. It is true. And that was their, that was on their show. I think they had a show on BET. I think that most people, and I hope this changes, guys, because I think love is beautiful. A lot of people are looking for a good time and not looking for a good person. And I think, again, going back to the character part of it, if we picked our partners based on their character over their bank account or their size of their rear end, I think we'd have more successful relationships and marriages. Life is hard. You need someone that will go through the sh with you. Go through the strike. Go through the strike with yeah. you. You want to be, if you're in a boat that's, that water is coming up, you want somebody with a pail yeah. helping you get the water out. And yeah, you probably can row effectively and, and bail the water effectively, but you're going to be tired. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you might not make it if you got somebody in there with you. And money money don't bail water. Well, my friend, <laughs> friend of mine was just recently in town and he said he went to the club with me and the bottle girl, he got her number. And the first question she asked him is, how much money do you make? And I'm like, is that the first question? You know, and and I and and then I I I was doing my other show, The Daily Drop, and I and I was on the show, and I mm -hmm. was saying that because there was a whole conversation around whether these two uh, people who are getting divorced they, they're fighting over the rent. Yeah. I said, well, when I get in a relationship, I would not have a problem paying the bills. Right. It, it doesn't mean I want you to be kept and don't have no independence, don't work. Right. Go out and make your money, keep all your money. Right. I just want to be a provider. Yeah. They were like, well, you're a paymaster. I'm like, that's not a paymaster. Nope. Where did we Where did we go to where somebody wanting to provide for their family is it's a bad, bad thing. thing? This is, I think we have it twisted. And there's so many people that have these podcasts and trying to, was it red pill, blue pill, pink mm -hmm. pill, whatever that stuff is. They they keep missing the, the fact that it should be two good people wanting to be together to make a life. Now, one person may be more successful than the other. Why does that mean that the person that's not successful financially, because I hope they're successful, hope they're rich in character. If they don't have money in finances, why does that make them worthless? When did we decide that if someone, if a man is not making over $100,000, he doesn't matter? I don't understand that. Mm -hmm. And I, I came from a family, my dad was a custodian. My mom was a secretary and I grew up in the house with my mom. We never had a lot of money. My dad did the best he could and he was a good man. It was He was never balling out of control, but he was a good man. And so I, in seeking love, I want a good man. I don't care how tall he is. I don't care how much money he makes. I have a thing I'm doing on, on Instagram right now called vetted, right? So I'm doing like a little matchmaking. Oh, we know. Okay. I, I want to be vetted. You want to be vetted? Yeah. Jason, I would love to no, vet you. No, because I'm, I'm so single, it's ridiculous. Jason, let's do it. Now, wait a minute, though. The only only thing <laughs> is with vetted, we're finding wives and husbands. So if you're trying to find a little... No, no, no. I got the little. Okay. You I want, got so a you lot want, of So you want your man. You're, you're yes, a forever man. I, yes. I'm going to bet you. I'm going to bet okay. you. So send me pictures. Just be you want. ready for the comments. No, it's fine. Because you, you know... The internet... My mouth got hands. You know this. I got okay, you. Okay. I got you. Ain't nobody well, talking you crazy. Cleveland. I'm South Stockton. Ain't, gonna be no, the, ain't nobody talking crazy about, about you on my page. But send me pictures that you but like. But tell people what the vet Okay. So this is the thing, guys. And it was so organic. It started with my brother. I posted a picture of my brother. And I was like, he's single. And girls like, oh my God. And started hitting his DMs. I was like, DMs. I'm like, wait a minute. Then my friend Gio got in. He was like, yo, I'm trying to find my wife. I was like, tell me what you want, player. So then I got pictures of him. I put what he wanted. Like a thousand comments. I'm like, Gio, you on fire. Gio's DMs were so on fire. He was like, can you tell him that, um, <laughs> that I need a break? Because I got to work through these hundred people that are already in here. Then my friend Karima Trotter, who's an amazing singer, um, she wanted to be vetted. And then it was this white man that I don't even know. His his friend called and said, he's such a sweet Mark, so nice. Can you just vet Mark? I said, absolutely. <laughs> he's about to meet the chick he met through vetted. So, really? so it, you're really connected people. I, and see how excited I am? I love love. I love the idea that people who want their person might be able to find their person. This is the thing. There's nothing wrong with saying 
I would love love. Right. And so many of us act like, well, I got everything. No, I would love to be in love. See, now you sound like my therapist. So my yeah. my, my therapist's name is Dr. Elliot Connie. Mm -hmm. Dr. Elliot always says to me, you're very open about your fashion. Mm -hmm. You're very open about your celebrity friends. You're very open mm -hmm. about your trips. Go on your Instagram and say you're looking for your love. I said, I'm that. And I'm see, not now, why? Thirsty. now why? Jay? See, why, why, why is it like, thirsty? Why is it I thirsty? I feel like if I said... Hey everybody! I mean, it feels like a, a like a weird Tinder ad. Like, hey everybody, I'm looking for love. Now, I want to be able to find it, and I'm and I'm looking. I'm probably looking in the wrong places. You are looking. I know already. I know you work in the wrong places. places. But but you know, like even right now, I found somebody that I actually like mm -hmm. that I connected with in 2019. Now we're reconnected. I feel like now I'm doing too much. Like I'm calling too much. I'm texting too much. Wait, didn't did we just talk about what what a nerd is? Is someone that loves something so much. Yeah. Why can you be that way about Rihanna or be that way about a new pair of sneakers and not be that way about a man that can but make you happy? He told me I can he told me I'm okay, but I still feel like when I'm doing it, I'm doing way too much. Dad, you need to talk to your therapist about that. Because right. this is the thing. I saw something on YouTube recently where a woman said, "You will know a man loves you or is into you because you you tripping over him." Good morning, text and good night, text and how did you sleep and did you drink your water? Those and, are all questions that I ask. And right, because you really, really like him. And this is the thing: for some reason, we this thirsty or you don't want you look. You sound desperate. I am desperate. I'm desperate to find the person that's going to make my heart sing. And why is it hard, wrong for me to say that? And the only thing that's happening with vetted is that people are saying, "I would like." to find my husband or my wife. And you look at someone like Karima Trotter and you go, she's gorgeous, she's probably getting stopped everywhere. But people probably look at her and go, she's probably taken. So that Dr. Elliot said, people are probably intimidated by you. They're, they're, everybody's they're probably they, afraid they to come afraid to you and you. say, I like you. Do you understand who you are and what you, the energy you put out in the world? Do you realize I, it? I'm doing the Lord's work. Okay, no, fine. But do you realize that, that you can be intimidating? I don't see that. Not, not I don't see that. I no, I see it for the work that I do with celebrities. Right. I don't see that for like somebody who may want to date me. You could possibly destroy someone that you're dating if they did not treat you right. If they didn't treat me right, I wouldn't destroy them. If they tried to destroy me, I would destroy them. Okay, there you go. So that understanding, they're, if they're kind of docile yeah. or if they're not in the industry, and also because of what you do and who you know, yeah, they'd yeah, be like, yeah. well, he wouldn't. You wouldn't like me. And that's the problem. We all feel because society says you gotta have six figures and you gotta have a BBL and you got we all are walking through life like, well, nobody would want me. And meanwhile, everybody's walking around lonely. Right. Because we don't care as much as we say we do about what someone makes. We just think that society cares. So because society cares, even though I would be okay if he makes fifty thousand a year, society says it must be a hundred, so I can't date this guy. I had a person say to me, um, let's let's talk about dating when I'm where you at. And I said, you're not going to be where I'm at for a long for time. For a long time. It and maybe you, And that. maybe you can't get to where I'm at until you have someone like me beside you. Right. And, and, and that there is the issue. That doesn't make you a paymaster no. because you support your partner and want your partner to be great. Right. The whole point of being in a relationship, and this is from the Christian's perspective also, and the real Christians, not the Republican Christians. I love everybody. <laughs> but from the Christian perspective, a help me is what a, a person that comes up beside you and says, what we doing? What you What we building? And everything that you dream of, they dream of with you and vice versa. And then together, you build this great thing. You don't start off as a power couple. One person may be powerful, the other person may be, may be trying to make it, or maybe you both haven't made it. And it's coming together that helps you build the thing that, that people talk about for generations. You know what I mean? But you have to be willing to say, I would like to be in love. I would like to find my person and then get with somebody and work with them and build. It's almost like that Barack and Michelle story, right? Isn't it? I mean, she was she was balling out of control when she met him. And then and then he became the president, but then she became the I think that she's probably the most famous first lady. Absolutely. Ever. And the most beloved. Yeah. You know, and what if she would have said, oh, he just starting at the I'm right. I'm a partner. He's just starting at the law firm. I don't need to be with this dude. Right. But she saw his character. She saw something in him that was amazing. Mm. And she helped him build and helped him become everything he's supposed to be. So like me, Yvette loves politics. What do you think yes. about Kamala Harris? I love listen, she's my Sora, first of all. So I listen, I love her. And I think that the I don't know who decided this, but they're like hiding her. They're hiding her accomplishments, they're hiding everything she does, and they're pushing forward people that say little snide things about her. And she's been quietly working. Have you been able to meet her? I, haven't met, I met her on Zoom. I interviewed her once on Zoom, but I haven't she's met her amazing. in person. She's wonderful. But, but do you think that there's unrealistic expectations about her because she's a vice president or because she's a black woman or both? Because she, she's a black woman. Because I don't know any other vice president that they've been on. Like, well, what, Nobody asked what Mike Pence was doing. 
Right. Nobody cared what, what Quayle was doing. Nobody remembers anything about Dan Quayle other than he got in a fight with Tupac. And he couldn't spell potato. Right, right. Right? So those are the things that you remember. But for some reason, Kamala has to be all things to all people, which she really is, though. She's really killing it, but nobody's talking about it. But don't you think she needs to be more aggressive and stand out there and not... Aggr- let me, I'm about let to me, say, because then she's she an angry black let woman. Let me take that back. Let me right. take that word back, because y'all won't be able to handle black women being aggressive. Right. Y'all call her all types of other things. Yeah. But uh, assertive. Do you think, because I, I, I feel like with her, she's, she's privately, she's a nice woman. I mean, I've said, I remember sitting down with her for coffee for what was supposed to be a 30 minute conversation, mm-hmm. but it was an hour and she mm-hmm. didn't want to leave, but she yeah. had to leave. But, you know, she, she, real, uh, I mean, I said to her, I said, Kamala, the, the, the thing that when I go through your social media that gets the most engagement mm-hmm. is when we just see you and Doug, you with your ponytail up, yeah. you and Doug in the kitchen. Or, and she looked at her team like, See, they yeah. want to see me. Yeah. What What do you think she can do to connect deeper to the what culture you just said? The but the community? other problem is, you know, if she does any flag flying for what she's done, then she wants to be present. She's ho- she can't win. And I think the those of us in the culture should understand. We know that she can't win. So we, out of everyone, should be kinder to her as she threads this very difficult needle. Mm-hmm. She wants to do good for the country. She wants to support the president that she's under, and she wants to have a political career beyond what she's doing now. All of that is fine. She just needs us to support her and stop tearing her down and stop lying on her. There's a lot of people lying on her. I remember when there was the back and forth with um, President Biden mm-hmm. and Charlemagne, where Charlemagne raised a, a, a perfectly sound issue. We're saying that, you know, Democrats shouldn't just expect black people to show up and vote for them. Mm-hmm. You should be fighting for our vote, fighting to earn our vote. But with the political climate that we're in now, isn't that kind of dangerous? It's dumb, actually. Mm-hmm. And um, I just had a conversation with someone on Twitter about this. I mean, Twitter's dying, but we had one little last conversation. Um, <laughs> Did you lose your blue check? Oh, blue check was gone. And I'm never going to get it back because I ain't paying a dime. Do you hear me? I ain't me paying neither. nothing. But um, the idea of I'm going to hold my vote until they tell me they're going to do what I want them to do. Okay, so, so you're going to hold your vote. And some of them held their vote. What did we lose? Roe v. Wade. What do we lose? Affirmative action. Because every time you hold your vote, what do we lose? School, uh, 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 books and schools. Because all these school boards are overrun with these Republican crazy people who don't want people to be able to read a freaking book. So every time you hold your vote, what you're doing is saying, I don't care about other people. I don't care about myself and I don't care about my children. You prove nothing. When you vote third party, when you hold your vote, you prove nothing. It is not what we want yet, but you have a couple of choices. You can keep voting for the people that are at least trying to make it better, or you could run. Mm. You actually could run because what Trump teaches us is that you ain't got to be smart to be president. Mm -hmm. You ain't got to be a a kind person to be president. You don't have to be unindicted or a a non-criminal to be president. So if you are a decent human being that wants good things for people, run for Mm -hmm. office. Run. So even in the conversation uh, of living in a two-party system, you can complain about it, but it is the system. You can't, do you ever see that changing, like an independent party? Because unless it's well-funded, well-organized, and well-intentioned. The problem is the third party always comes up a year and a half before the damn election. That is not the time. If you are serious about forming a third party, the day after the election, tell everybody, come to my website, I'm starting a third party, this is what I believe in, and spend the next three years showing people what you would do if you were elected. You coming in a, a, a year before the, see how mad I am? You come in a year before the election, all you are is a spoiler. Right. And that takes votes away from absolutely yeah, from the party that could do be more well intentioned, and that wants to be. And everybody that's finding beef with Biden right now forgets that we lost the House. If they had shown up and voted, we would have had the House and the Senate, and there was nothing that Mansion or Cinema could have done to stop anything that we could have just written. He could have just. Everything, right through. Law, law, But don't we got to make sure people even know what a mansion in cinema is? Because I feel like people who are the loudest on social media about politics are people who are not even focused on it. They don't even understand what civics is. They don't even understand that that the the Congress has the power of the purse and that nothing can... Biden can't just go, well, okay, I'm going to sign this. They have the power of the purse. We need basic civics. I need everybody to go watch Schoolhouse Rock. I am a bill. If y'all just go and watch I am a bill, (laughs) it will teach you everything you need to know about how a bill becomes law. Mm -hmm. It's not just the president deciding he's going to do something. Hmm. Oh. I, I met the president at, at the Christmas party, and mm. I walked up to him. We only had a couple seconds. Yeah. And I, he said, nice suit. And I said, you're the most underrated president I've ever seen. Good for you. Because you've done a lot of good work. Anti-lynching bill. Yep. I mean, even with the student debt forgiveness and that being overturned, they're making that a bad Biden thing. But that's how your government that's works. That's how your government works, because you don't vote. And you have a, a Supreme Court that's stacked with a bunch of people that aren't fighting for the interests of folks like no, us. No, they're fighting for the rich people. What do you people. think about Clarence Thomas? 
Who? Who? <laughs> I don't know her. <laughs> Sorry to that man. It's foolishness. <laughs> horrible. He's a horrible human being. I think his wife is horrible. And um, I think that he's been on the take for many years. Mm. Sue me. I think he's been on the take. I think that he has been quietly taking favors and little perks and, and things. And I think that it's coloring how he governs. Mm. We'll say allegedly, even though they just allegedly found some payments that were quite a question. Allegedly. Too. There we go. I'm, a, I'm an old legal secretary. Allegedly, he's a criminal. Now, um, Candace Owens. Hmm? Who? <laughs> They're all one and the same. It's the same people. Is Coonan an actual career? Oh, yeah. It's a very lucrative career. You know, all you have because to do... Because they find somebody black to go out and say the all craziest... You have to say they, they find someone black who will turn on their own people and say what the what the white people want to say, the racist white people want to say. But it's palatable coming from a black face. So they can talk about black on black crime and oh, Chicago, what are we going to do about Chicago? They can do all of those things under the guise of black face. They are, they are skin folk, not kin folk. Or anti-abortion or, rhetoric. That, absolutely. Uh, or anti... Um, uh, what is Affirmative it? action. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, well, I pulled myself up by my bootstraps. I got here working hard. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. There's been affirmative action in your life too, dear Candy. You uh, recently posted a lot about the DEI officers at all these different mm -hmm. places. And then it went viral. We posted on Hollywood Unlocked. So for those of you that don't know, diversity and inclusion, each business has uh, a person that looks like us to talk about how to bring in more people that look mm -hmm. like us. Well, after the whole affirmative action uh, decision was made at the Supreme Court, people started getting let go or yep. leaving these institutions. Leaving. Was that all performative to have these people Absolutely. there? Absolutely. It was the black squares. Remember when, I remember when, when, when George Floyd was murdered and all the black squares popped up. I was one of the idiots that thought, no, they really get it. No, they're, they're gonna, this black square means something. They're going to change. I really oh, believe it. You mean the, all the businesses, all the businesses that, that, that they were going to give millions of oh, dollars I just, towards? I'm like, this is, this is when it turns, guys. They, they finally have seen it. They're all home. And they all saw it. Now yeah. they, they won't call us liars when we say they kill us in the streets. And it lasted, what, a year and a half, two years. And now they believe that racism is fixed. So we don't need these DEI officers. And I had so many people pop into my, my comments. Well, you know, only one of them was fired. The three of them left on their own. I said, oh, so you've never known a black person that's in a really horrible work position that finally says, you're not listening to me. I'm not helping. You're not letting me help anybody. So I'm out. Like, just because they chose to leave doesn't mean that the... The, the work environment wasn't horrible. Right. Or you think in this economy, somebody that's making money at that level is just, just walking walk away, away at the same time. At the same time. All of them just walking just away at the same time. Just a coincidence. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so um, I was doing some research. Now, I know we got this strike going, so we yeah, can't talk can't about promote, promote shows. Yes. Because I'm going to ask a question. You tell me if I asked it right or wrong. Okay. okay. You were on a show back in the day that we can't talk about. Right. But it's very popular with kids. Okay. And... You were very popular on the show, and then at some point you were replaced by another black woman. Okay, yes, I was not replaced on this show. Break it down because okay, yeah, I saw we, some, we did some research. We saw people asking questions. Yeah, that okay, so on that show, at the time I did that show, I was also doing another show. Okay, Kevin Hart's first show. Okay, and um, we didn't know if the, that first show was going to go the distance. I had just done the pilot. By the time I agreed to do the second show, that first show got picked up and we were going back in production. And I was like, oh gosh, I have this other show. So I had to leave to finish that show. The character I was playing on the kids show was not supposed to recur. Okay. It was supposed to be a one shot. And then they were like, well, we like her, let's bring her back. And then I wasn't available. But so you saw all the people that were concerned about why you didn't come back. Yes, I think they it thought- It became a thing. Yeah, they thought that I was fired or I, there, was, there was nothing. I just, was, I wasn't available and they wanted to keep the character. And so I think they thought, that that new actress would then be the be that person for the rest of the show, but then my show got canceled, and I was able to go back. And but so did that other it. actor come in and play your character? Yes, my exact character. But did they? And they didn't tell wait, anybody. Wait, wait, wait. But did they expect the kids to go? It's just a black woman. <laughs> That they all the same. I believe. Because that's that's what the chatter is. That they just thought that if they just brought in another black woman. <laughs> No well, one, could no name one would her be, Lucy. Or no something. one would be the wiser. No, they just. I'm having another hot flash, y'all. I'm sorry. This Wait. is this is what it is when you get old. Turn the mics down so you don't catch the fan. Wait, it, didn't they do that with Aunt Viv too? Did they? They didn't. Remember Aunt Viv yeah, was dark Aunt and Viv. then she was light. Yeah. Like one season. This wasn't a color issue with this. They they matched me pretty good. Like if you <laughs> if you weren't paying attention, yeah. you might have thought that Francis was me. So yeah. Got they it. tried it. Okay. Yeah. But it was no shade. It was you were unavailable. Yeah, I was unavailable. Okay. It was never. It was but never. But the shade was they just. <laughs> the shade was they wanted that character back and I wasn't available. So they well, just why didn't they just have a funeral for her and then? Because have... they liked her. Like they they had created this really <laughs> silly character and they didn't want to have to reinvent the mm -hmm. wheel. So. 
So out of every career you can ever you could have done or been, anything you could have been, why did you choose acting? Or you how know, did I it choose like, you? I feel like acting chose me. I actually, before I thought of entertainment and saw Janet and Kim Fields, I wanted to be a teacher. Mm. And I still think I'm a teacher. I think I'm a teacher in everything that I do. Um, but I wanted to be a singer. I was, I think I told you this last time I was here, East Coast family, I mm-hmm. was signed. So I thought that would be my career. But anybody that knows me knows I, I ain't wearing no leotard. I'm fully covered. Like I'm upset that a little cleavage is showing right now. I'm a little baby Jesus. And I can't, I can't sing. Can you see me twerking? Like it would never happen. I was going to say you wouldn't be twerking for a Birkin. No, I can't do it. And it's no judgment to those that do, but I'm just, I'm very modest. I'm very, you know, I'm PG-13. Are you conservative? Not at all. Okay. Not conservative. I'm very liberal. I'm conservative in dress only. Got it. So like if you see me out and if you look at any picture of me on IMDb, I am always from here to here. Covered. I don't show no yeah, part of my body. You lost weight, got fit. You. It's not. I didn't get fit. Yes. Well, well, I lost weight. Listen, <laughs> didn't get fit. listen. Y'all can say whatever you want. What's up <laughs> under here? We're fit compared we're, to. Uh, yeah, we're compared to where we were. But this is the thing. I I remember a friend of mine was like, "When you lose that weight, you're gonna be naked." I'm like, "You don't know me. I'm I'm a con- I'm a very modest person. Like when I swim, I have I don't wait a minute. I don't swim. I'm gonna learn. But when I get in my pool, I've never heard a black person come on this show and say, "When I swim." <laughs> Because we don't swim. No, we don't swim. We, we, we lounge. Have you been to an L.A. pool party? They just lounge, lounge around. We don't go in the water. That's it. Exactly. So I had to fix that. So not when I swim. But if I get into the pool or if I stand by the pool, I'm in like swim. I put on like a, uh, I have swim a swim long sleeve shirt yeah. that I wear. It's a swimsuit, but it's long sleeve. And then I have a little skirt that I wear. I'm very okay, modest. But where does that come from? Because I could tell you mine comes from my own insecurity. I, I mean, I may have body dysmorphia. I don't know. But it's not about I don't want people to see me because I may not look good. I just feel like my body is not for public consumption. Mm. I'm just modest. So uh, when you, uh, so you you had type 2 diabetes. I still have type you 2 You still, diabetes. even and with the t- weight loss? Well, okay, this is the thing. This is what I found out yesterday. I was really tired and I didn't know why I was tired. And then I realized my blood sugar was low. Mm. So when you have type two, you can't, it's not just the highs that you have to worry about, it's the lows as well. And so I've been doing so well with my diabetes. I stopped checking and literally could have been in a diabetic coma. So it's very That's scary. Cr- so how did you find out you had it? Um, how did I find out I had diabetes? I was shooting a show. I can't say the show because I can't promote anything. <laughs> We're not promoting no not shows promoting, But it was a show where I was, we had 16 hour days. It was a really, really funny show, but a really tough show to shoot. And I remember... I ate myself, I ate myself to diabetes. Like every time we would have a break, one of the people on the show who's gone on to win Emmys and is amazing rapper, he would create when he had time off. He would create beats, he would write shows about cities in Georgia. He did all of these things. It's so hard not to promote anything. <laughs> and I instead would go eat donuts. Mm-hmm. And so as I'm watching myself on the show get bigger and bigger and bigger, and I'm getting more sluggish, and then I'm I'm thirsty all the time, I'm going to the bathroom all the time, and I don't know what it is. And then I went to see my doctor and the first time I went, she was like, you know, you need to watch it because you're pre-diabetic. And then when I finally got diabetes, she didn't even call, she didn't even call me. She just sent me a letter and said, you have diabetes. And when I called her, she said, you, you've been working for it, been fighting to get it. And she was a sister. Like she was, you know, sisters is like, So Look. she was forcing you to own it. She was forced, forcing me to own it. And Damn, I, that and, was tough love And then though. I was like, dang, you know, like she was literally like, congratulations, you now have diabetes. So that's how I found out. So, so once you have diabetes, you can't lose it? You can go into remission, which is what I call it. So this is what I learned. Because once I'm, I'm a voracious reader. So as soon as I got it, I'm like, I got to find out everything. So you were researching. Absolutely. And so a 7% um, weight loss, no, 10% weight loss can change your entire diagnosis. So if you're 200 pounds and you lose 20 pounds, it can completely make it better. It can make your pancreas go, oh, I know how to make insulin. Right. So I just started thinking, well, I just need to lose that whatever that 10 percent is for me and I'll be okay. And then once you do that, they can take you off metformin. You can if you are on insulin, it can take you off insulin. But it's with your you got to talk to your doctor. Like, don't just Mm -hmm. lose the weight and be like, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Go and get go and get your blood checked and make sure you're good. Mm. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you're good. I'm glad that you're here. We have to talk about some really important stuff because all of you that are watching your favorite shows aren't going to have no shows to watch Mm -mm. because of this damn strike. And it's important that we're having this conversation today because it's not Yvette's fault, the writer's fault, or anybody else that's working behind the scenes. It's these greedy ass owners. So we're going to talk about that right now. All right, we're back. Now we got to open up the conversation of what uh, we've been talking about briefly with Yvette. And now we're joined by Malcolm Barrett and Allison Faust. Did I say it right? Yes, you did. Okay, because you know, sometimes our names, we get it wrong. (laughs) 
uh, showrunner and actor. You know, uh, people that have read my book, they know that my in my previous life before entertainment, I worked at, I'll say I served as a labor leader for SEIU for 11 years. So I understand the labor movement. I understand the fight that we're in. And right now, actors, writers, it seems like almost everybody in the industry, except for the executives who got mm. the jets and all the money, uh, are on strike. Now, what you're on the board, the national board, mm -hmm. right? So can you break that down for people that don't even understand what this strike is about, what it is that you do for SAG-AFTRA and what the strike is about? Well, SAG-AFTRA is a, after is a union um, that makes sure that we have everything we need as actors, right? So whenever there's a contract, they make sure that we have proper uh, trailers and food and all of that. So it's like any other union. Um, what we're fighting for now and what I, I'm so glad that you're doing this, Jason, is it's important for people to know that this is not some clash of the titans. This is not billionaires fighting millionaires for money. We're fighting for the working actor, the journeyman writer. We're fighting so that those that work, what, how often do they, I mean, I think it's like at any time, how many of us are unemployed at any time, Malcolm? It's like 98% of us are not working at any given time. And those that do work, most don't make over 26,000 a year. The medium, uh, the median, uh, pay, I think, is 40000 But if you take the 30 or $40 million a superstar makes plus the zero someone else makes, you're going to get to that forty. So mm. it's really a lot of people living at the poverty level or below. And so those of us that can speak up, that can sit with Jason Lee and talk about it, we're talking about it. So it's not about me. It's about the people that are trying to make it. We need to fight for them. And that's what we're doing. The same thing for the writers. Yes, Al? Yes. The writers really, um, it's an extra... <sighs> Existential. Existential time for us. She's been striking for 70 yeah, some days. She's yeah, tired. 78 days. I'm tired. I was on the line there? yesterday. You've been out there? Yes. In the heat and everything. And my brain is just kind of picking up. I don't sleep well because I'm worried about those other writers, those kids who are coming up in a time where I don't know if they'll have a career, mm -hmm. where they'll always have to have a second or third job just to be a writer. Yeah. And you give so much of yourself as a writer that's really spreading yourself too thin. They have a right to live their dreams and to be paid well for their work, as we all do. So we fight for them and the future of the business. Mm -hmm. Essentially, the business model is changing, but they're not allowing us to benefit from that change. Um, as we're going more and more into streaming, we're having to do uh, more of the work for less pay. So you look at a streaming show, you know, it used to be there may be 22 episodes of any given TV show. And, you know, and then you'd hear about, you know, Seinfeld or Friends, they renegotiate, they're making a million dollars for the 10th year of a show. Well, now you have a show like Blue Bloods where they're cutting regulars and people are losing pay, right? All these popular series are actually losing people. Uh, people who are working for streamers, you may do, let's say, 10 episodes for a streamer. They now have many rooms for writers. So now instead of developing and taking that process, which takes months and months and creates work for months and months, mm -hmm. you now have everyone being paid basically the same amount of money or less. Um, and within the course of a month and a half trying to develop this the show. Entire series. And yeah. the same for actors. And you get caught up in these exclusive contracts. So what happens is you've gone from doing 22 episodes of a show and getting paid uh, well and having residuals to suddenly doing 10 episodes of show being uh, exclusive to that and not being able to work for the rest of the year. So we're making less money for more work, um, while at the same time, the corporations are making more money and are benefiting yep. from this business model. So I think that's been the biggest problem. And it's, it's very much on purpose. Um, it is yeah. constantly them trying to kick the ball away from us. Um, if you look at the top things that we're looking for, as, as Yvette said, you know, the union is made up of, it's not made up of just the Tom Cruises and, and the Denzel Washingtons. It's made up of the people who, uh, give Tom Cruise a beer <laughs> and Denzel in a Washington scene, right. in a, a scene and, and in real life. Right. <laughs> you know and, what and I mean? Wrote the script to give him the Yeah. Absolutely. Do you know what I mean? It's a lot of people working on, on the sidelines. So, you know, we actually are fighting for a lot of the same things that mostly everybody else is fighting for, which is healthcare. Yep. Our healthcare, the, the mechanism behind that hasn't changed since I think the sixties or, or the eighties. So we're still fighting. Healthcare, I think, is the number one issue, the number one um, cause of debt in America. And that is what's happening with actors as well. And um, writers. And actors and writers as well. Um, same thing, we also fight for uh, you know residuals. So if you look at the things that we're most fighting for, when you look at their responses, that's what they've rejected right, across they released, the board. Not to interrupt, but they released the list of what SAG asked, asked for and what the response from the producers were. And the simplest things, Jason, like, yeah. can we have, uh, can you shorten the exclusivity or whatever? 
rejected. If you look on their side, it's not even like, well, we won't do that, but we'll do this. It's like, oh, no, no, this, we're not doing this at all. Here's, this is rejected. Here's my, uh, some of my favorite rejections. Uh, top five rejections. Do we have a? It doesn't matter. So. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> those people are on strike. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Sorry. Exactly. Uh, here's one. This is a list of five things that automatically, and it's perfect that it's under modernization and addressing industry shifts. Uh, apply union scale minimums, at rest periods, and protections for minors to new media productions so that are high So protect the budget. children. So protect your children. And, and give and them give a, a break. certain amount of money for the break. Reject it. <laughs> um, you know, uh, increase penalties for not providing meal breaks. Uh, rejected. Rejected. Um, all these basic things for residuals. Rejected, rejected, And rejected. by the way, I mean, when I worked at the union with Kaiser, with healthcare workers, we have... Pen, we have that in those contracts. Mm -hmm. You know, there's uh, child care for health care workers. If for people in general who have kids who want to be able to have work-life balance is a thing, right? Uh, you want to make sure your kid is good. You want to make sure that if you're overworked that you're compensated for overtime and paid meals. I mean, this just seems like basic things. Regular yeah, stuff. But I yeah, think yeah. what's happening with you all, because you're in the industry, it's glitz, it's glamour, celebrity, they're gaslighting the audience. Right. To, to think that this is a power struggle between rich and famous it's not. people it's and, not. The, and the studio. And what they forget, too, is that acting is just a job. You know, they add all this other, oh, you're good. You got, you got your alarm clock goes off. You got to get in the shower. You got to drive somewhere. You're going to work your 10 to 12, 16 hours. You get a lunch break. You come home. You expect a check. All of these things are what everybody who has a job expects. It doesn't become special and glamorous because some of these people make a lot of money. It's still a job. Mm -hmm. And if you work a job, you want to be paid fairly for your job. You want some health care. You want to be able to send your kids to school with a tuna fish sandwich. Mm -hmm. This is the same thing right. everybody feels. They, it's a job, but we also create a product that's generating them so millions, much money, millions, millions of, dollars. of dollars. And what the writers are asking for will cost them less than 2% mm -hmm. of their profits. I mean, they wouldn't even miss 2%. Nope. You, if you took Zasloff's pay for the last five years and had him pay out what the writers... Who is this? Zasloff is the head of Warner Brothers. Okay. He's one of the highest paid uh, CEOs in, in the entertainment out of the AMPTP. Um, if you took his pay for the last five years and gave the writers what they wanted, he'd still have $130 million left over. Uh, so, so this is capitalism? It's it's, it's, greed. Greed. it's greed. It's greed. It's greed. It's, it's, greed. Greed. it's, it's greed. the worst part of capitalism. Mm -hmm. I mean, and and speaking to the very simple. Because need. I just saw in the, literally the news in L.A. If you want something comical and psychotic, watch the news in L.A. It was <laughs> writers mm -hmm. are on strike, actors are on strike. Bob Iger got extended his contract for fifty yeah. more million dollars. Yeah, like in the same how can, breath. How? It's, cra it's crazy. He, was, he gave his interview from the billionaire camp. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's given one interview. Bob, Iger, was at camp Bob Iger is the uh, president and CEO of uh, Disney. You know, so that's ABC, ESPN. I mean, it's all these networks. So they extended his contract for a couple more years, which mm -hmm. gave him 50 something million dollars in the midst of a but whole what, strike. But what yeah. they want is unreasonable. What we want is unreasonable. You know what I'm saying? You should. I remember when I, I used to be a legal secretary. When I started out, my thought about it is this. Everybody should get what they deserve, but not as much as they can get. And I think what happens is that people look, these big, these fat cats and these business affairs, people go, well, I, I could get this though. And then they just grab for everything they can get. And that's always going to cause harm to somebody else, always. My other favorite rejection is late payment. They refuse. They acknowledge that they pay late, <laughs> yes. and it has been increasingly late, and they refuse to pay on time. No, and no interest. They With no interest, interest. And, and the penalties. They acknowledge that they don't pay us on time, and they refuse to change that. And the craziest thing is there is penalty pay, well, at least in the contracts we negotiated at Kaiser for that very issue, because, you know, they say what a fair day's pay for a fair day's work. If you right. do the work, you should yeah. get paid. I think the thing that's important and why I want to do this show is just kind of like normalizing the conversation, because I think the glitz and glamour of the industry is making people who work, whether you're a police officer, mm -hmm. a teacher, a pharmacy tech, or a nurse, you know, people that work deserve to be compensated right. Right. fairly. Now, the thing that caught my attention was the guy who had created Squid yep. Games that made them over a billion dollars wasn't participating in any of that. Nope. nope. No. So nope. how is that even possible? Uh, well, they, Is it because streaming is... A, it's, it's, it's the technology and the advance of the this industry is, this, has... This, the, this, right? is, this is what happened, and I, we talked about this yesterday. Um, when something is new, the producers act as if, I don't know if it's going to be yeah. any money. Oh, God. DVDs. Oh, yeah. oh. Right. It happened from, I don't know. From right? movies to television, exactly. television to videotapes. And then streaming. Right. Uh, that to cable to right. streaming. They yeah. always go, I don't know. And so they tell you when you have that meeting, 
Hey guys, we're gonna try this streaming thing. We, we don't know what it is, so could you give us like a little break? Like instead of give, well, instead of giving you twenty cents on a dollar, we're gonna give you ten cents on a dollar just till we figure out what this. And then thing when Blockbuster is. shuts down and goes right. out of the industry, right. Then what? Then, then we're they, still figuring it then, out. Yeah, you're still figuring it out. And then also, you've now agreed to the contract. So when you go back and go, hey guys, remember we said when Blockbuster went out, we would. Uh, oh well, this is this is the contract now. That's I don't. What you agree we can't to. go back and. Do anything with that, but what about this AI thing? Oh, AI. Oh. Yeah. So it's the same yeah. thing they do every time. And so what happens is we end up chasing it. We we have a contract for three years. They're making b- billions of dollars. We chase it, and they say no, reject it, reject it, reject it. So we're trying to get both of us, the Writers Guild and SAG, after are trying to get ahead of it this time, so we don't have to chase money that we're owed. One of the things that we noticed through all the contracts is the AI thing. Um, you know, it is slightly different for for each union, but what was clear is that. Um, all attempts to address AI were rejected, rejected. Yes. which and is very it. scary coming from three huge tech companies mm-hmm. because it is very clear that they are trying to replace every part of plans. labor that they can. The only thing that the DGA was able to get, not to disparage them, was... DGA is Director's Guild. Yeah. Yes, they got that um, AI are, is not human. Um, so that's <laughs> that's what AMPTP was willing to relent. Mm-hmm. And that is that is the fight that we have as normal individuals. But who is AMTP? Because you have to remember the audience, all oh, they right. know is all they know is Fran Drescher, the nanny. Got it. <laughs> let, me, let me break it down. Let the me... nanny is the reason why everything ain't happening, which <laughs> right. is not it's true. Not true. Right. Because it's not as true. you know, the union and workers who organize are always labeled the bad people. Like it's your fault. I remember in healthcare, they used to always say when we would take the nurses out on strike, oh, they don't care about the patients. See how they're going to leave Nurse, you there to die? It's like, care. wait a minute. Nurses. These people want to be able to have breaks so they're not Absolutely. hurting the patients. They want to have good pay so they're motivated to do their jobs. Absolutely. But don't prey on their emotional you know, connection to their work as yeah. the reason why the whole nursing industry exactly. is falling apart. Well, this is the first time our PR has been this good. The Writers Guild was winning the PR game before the actors came on, mm-hmm. you know, because they weren't expecting us to fight back. And we've done that over social media and everything else we could do. And when you say they try to make the unions look bad, those are the fat cats mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. there is nothing more American than unions. Right. right. And, th- and they don't want us to be relatable to everyone else. They don't want us to be relatable to the UPS drivers. They don't want us to be a- relatable to Amazon workers. They try to make it sound like it's glitz and glam, but we're living paycheck to paycheck, Mm -hmm. struggling to pay our bills. Mm -hmm. So I think as far as people's interpretation of what we're striking for now has become more relatable. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's a great thing. The other thing I want to say about the the way the Writers Guild works is that when you start as as a beginning writer, you learn on the job. You get to go yeah. to set. You get to see what it's like when it's time to edit. And there's steps. Like every time you come back to do a show, you get to the next level and you go, oh, today I get to do this. Now I'm doing this. They've taken that away. So now, 10 years from now, we won't have writers that know how to be on set and or new showrunners. We won't have them because yeah. they haven't learned what they need to learn. Mm-hmm. And that's probably most harmful for writers of color and women. Always. Yes. Because we, you know where we're starting to make crossroads or inroads is in the entry level positions, right? Yeah. Because the executive, co-executive producers is still predominantly white, predominantly white male. So the way that we are able to make our inroads, and even then, even then the system is still screwed, right? It's still a lot of writers of color who have to redo their first year. Yep. We're on there's some other show because they're considered uh, um, diversity a hires. diversity hire or yes. something to that extent. So all of a sudden your credits don't even count. And again, Like she said, the union represents a a host of things that aren't even just pay, right? These are the big ticket items, right? We're also talking about healthcare. We're also talking about uh, proper sexual harassment guidelines. We're talking about diversity issues, hair and makeup. Minimums. Yeah, the minimums. There's a there's a big fight in the hair. The the open secret is that um, they, if you're on a white show, a predominantly white show, there will not be competent hair and makeup teams. You cannot guarantee that there will be a competent hair and makeup team for people of color. I know if I go. On a black show, I'm good. They're gonna give me a little piece you see on TikTok if I need it. You know what I mean? They're gonna give me a whole thing. I'm good. You know, I'm I'm literally I can go into the past. I have black a lot folks more. not gonna have to dust. That's not going no. <laughs> <laughs> to you go on a, on a produ- and you know, if they hire the right people, yeah. you know, they'll be there. But if they're not, it's it's a second guess to them. Mm-hmm. Right? So you have 
actors like Yvette and, and young black actors who are getting their haircuts, getting their hair and makeup done before outside, go. before they arrive. Or bring outside. coming in with a bag of hair yeah. and all your makeup because Every black you know person they won't have your color there. Every black person that work in Canada know uh, the barber named Junior. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we literally all go to Junior. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And it's an, it's Is that a, a real thing? Yeah. It's real. It's real. If you go to Vancouver and you work in Vancouver, because a lot junior? of the shows go to Vancouver, you go to Junior. I guarantee you, you can ask every black actor you come in contact with who's worked in Vancouver, they've worked with Junior. I guarantee. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. That's how big a disparity it is in the hair and makeup department. And it's a frustrating thing for me to get to a point of even being able to say something about it took 20 years, mm-hmm. right? I'm Because you can't speak up. Because you can't speak up. Um, Why, because then you'll be blackballed? Absolutely, or because it's Blackballed, or they call you difficult. The way they get you to is that, and this is why it's important for our contracts to be good for everyone. When you reach a certain level in your career, you can negotiate for yourself. Like if they say, Yvette, we put you in coach. No, you ain't. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I, give me that business mm-hmm. class. That so we, you get to a point where you can start asking for things. But if the basic contract says coach, and I am starting yeah. out and I go, oh, gosh, I don't want to fly coach. OK, you don't have to. I'm going to get her. So they just go, thank you, excuse me. And they move to the next person. So it's also pitting actors and writers against each other because somebody's going to take the deal. Mm-hmm. If yeah. the contract is so bad eventually, and you say no, somebody's going to say yes. So we got to make the contract better. Oh, when I did Wild and Out, not only did they put me in coach, they put me in a middle seat in <laughs> the back of the flight. <laughs> and I remember it. calling yeah. my people like, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm not Nick Cannon. But uh, no. y'all Wild got and me out. in between these two. <laughs> <laughs> I was upset about it Absolutely. Yeah. because I did feel like I'm flying to do a show to for do MTV. A job? That's yeah. right. And they have it the money. It feel like, yeah. well, you know, I heard they make you take Uber airplane. Uh, <laughs> so, oh, no. they, they, they didn't do spirit in front of Frontier, <laughs> but, you know, but there was no, I, love I would have expected home. being, I think at the time I was SAG after eligible mm-hmm. or whatever, uh, that there would have been better treatment yeah yeah you don't no. want to be treated like cattle no yeah. because no, the con- because then the you have fans here. in the back taking videos of you sitting yeah. Absolutely. That seat. Yeah. and Absolutely. now your contract your your inability to allow us to have better opportunities got us looking crazy, got us on looking social crazy. Media. and yeah. you looking crazy now your company looks yeah. crazy because you got because i would here. absolutely post that video and say mtv did it's it. what it is <laughs> <it. laughs> <laughs> yeah. absolutely where my money absolutely and so okay now with the streamers so there was something else that affected the writers or yeah the writers or something with residuals what for the people that don't understand how it's affecting the residuals with the streamers, can somebody break that down? You want to go out? What? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't I, wait. I, no. I love <laughs> she was like, <laughs> <laughs> with the network, there's a set standard of how much you'd make on a network show. And with those residuals, they keep you afloat between jobs. With streamers, because it's new media and we're all trying to act like it's not TV, they didn't have that. So they could basically pay you whatever they wanted, which was either nothing or very little. Mm -hmm. If you were lucky, you got a third of what network residuals are, but not on a regular basis. It would just show up and you go, what the hell is this for? You know, but it wasn't anything that could help you survive between gigs. Right. And that is what that is. You know, it's not extra money. It's money so that if I don't know what my next gig is, I can still pay my mortgage or my rent or feed my kids. Right. You know, so we have to require that. Look, if on Netflix, they are streaming Bridgerton billions of times globally, and you don't get a check from that? Mm -hmm. Right. You know, that's insane. And they're still profiting off of your work. Mm -hmm. So we have to change that. We have to, you know, and again, we're not asking to become one of them. I don't know what they're afraid of. We just want to survive to be able to do the work we love. Well, I think it goes back to greed, too. I mean, the people that the audience loves to watch. I mean, I saw recently they said Euphoria probably, the next season probably won't come out to 2026. Yeah. Yeah. Who, what audience is waiting around for that? I don't know. Zendaya's going to be 48 by then. (laughs) (laughs) She's going to have an overdose between now (laughs) and and the way that shows. But but I mean, think about it. I mean, you fall in love with these shows, you fall, Mm -hmm. but you fall in love with the people who are doing the shows. You fall in love with the people writing them. You fall in love with the people acting the roles. I mean, when you think about it, the shows that we fall in love with, it's the people behind the scenes right. that are doing all the work. It's not the platform that you're watching. Because I do see like a Netflix or one of some of these streamers, will they'll do a great job of marking how convenient it is you get the whole season now. You get it. You don't have to wait anymore. But what is the trickle down effect of that convenience? Oh, this is the thing. It's okay that you're making it convenient, right. but, but don't make it at, at the oh, they don't care you know, hardship of the people. They don't care. The, and the, the other art. thing they do with the 
the big thing is that the, the streaming money is not good. That's first. Second, they hold you exclusively. So yes. all you getting is that five dollars because you can't take another gig for the eight months that you're, the show is. They're deciding about the show. And then the other side of it is you just you you don't know how the show is doing. They don't share the streaming number, so you can't even go back and go. Five million people watched it this morning. You can't. Wait, so there's no. There's oh. no way. No. So that's no, the, that's no, the no, other that's big the thing. Way. That's the other wait, big wait, wait, thing wait, we're see, fighting. You can tell me Netflix is because right now I think you guys are charging me nineteen ninety nine, and if you have a if you have five hundred million people on Netflix, that that's some crazy money. They yeah, can they, tell oh, you how you don't have no system. They to can tell them. you your auntie done stopped watching Hunger Games as soon as Captain did this, but yep. they can't tell you how many people how many are watching. People they watch. can't tell us. They could, they, they but they, 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 they won't. won't. They they won't. won't. They, only yeah. when they want to brag, they, you know, then they'll release some numbers like, oh, everybody in the world watch this show, mm -hmm. you know, to get more people to watch it. But going back to what you said about the pandemic, uh, with Yvette not coming out, there were people who got through the pandemic watching her own community mm -hmm. and other shows that mm -hmm. they love. Mm -hmm. And now you want to take those shows from them, mm -hmm. which is basically going to happen. The fall season it's is done. done. It's done. It's a wrap. Meaning, You're going to be watching the reality audience, shows. There's, there's no shows coming this there's fall. There's nothing being written. No. They, they will be writing and shooting them right now. Exactly. No one's writing, no one's shooting. So there's no new shows. Abbott Elementary, all of those shows, they will not have new episodes come from. No. How can you build such successful shows and have an audience that's so plugged in but allow greed to make you ruin them? Well, and, and they are losing more money than if they would have given us Every day, uh, given the like writers what they want. Yeah. I think it's somewhere around day. three billion at this point. Yeah. So it, at that point, you kind of wonder what is the principle they're standing by. Well, they're sending the, a message clearly. Yeah. I mean, that's what most people who are union busters or who are who are anti uh, uh, worker. Mm -hmm. That's what they do. Yeah. I mean, because now you don't deliver the show, you piss off the audience. Well, we would have gave it to you if these if ungrateful would've writers yeah. would have just come to work, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And you know, and then that's the. That's the crazy thing that people don't realize is that even though this may be your career, you might still have a million side jobs. And like she said earlier, not everybody qualifies for healthcare. So you can be doing this for nine years, 10 years into your career, but because of the strike or because you're on a streaming show that you did, you know, you may be a regular on, but they don't release for a year. Yep. Um, you now don't qualify for health insurance Dude. or they, or they pull. I mean, that's it. That's the yeah. thing that they did to the viewers, right? They said, Here's, they said, here's ad-free, um, infinite amount of shows on this thing. Suddenly there's ads, and suddenly they're pulling shows and programming from those things that, that you've already paid for. And when they add those ads, that doesn't change our price. It doesn't change nope. uh, our residuals. Nope. It doesn't change anything. But again, that corporation, they get more and money. That platform, one, they get more money. There's one other thing we haven't talked about. These contracts now prepay residuals. Right. So say you negotiate a huge amount mm. for yourself, like you're way over scale, you're doing great. You're not doing great because they now say you won't get residuals until we recoup that extra five dollars we gave you. They, so you're yeah. not. And then also a lot of times with streamers, you don't get paid. And even network shows, I think now you don't get paid until it's aired five or six times. Mm. Where before you got paid, the next time it aired, you got almost your same salary again. Now it's five or six times. I don't know anyone that's going to watch an episode five or six times. Mm -hmm. So that means by the time you would get a residual, no one wants to watch it anymore. Mm. It's all just little traps that we're stepping in. But now they're talking about just more reality shows while they starve out the actors, right? Is that is the, is the reality show, is that why they created the reality show? That's yes. how they became popular. That's, yeah, the that's last what happened to Light's last writer strike. That's, really? That's how Trump happened. <laughs> Literally. Oh, the Apprentice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they were going to kill The Apprentice, but then the writer strike happened and scripted shows celebrity started Apprentice, dying away. Yeah. And then so they brought you Celebrity Apprentice. And it extended uh, the, that, that show's shelf life and, and, and Trump's shelf life, uh, to be honest. So it's they go to reality because they can pay folks less because it's, it's, it's a lot of folks trying to enter the business for the mm -hmm. first time um, or be on camera for the first time and so and the contracts are different so they just because it's not written right and we're not acting and and all these things so everyone gets paid yeah, but less. Them reality shows are so storyboarded out you can call Absolutely. it obviously and say it's full not of actors. Actors. Obviously. Yes. they're yeah. full of actors right yeah. everybody cardi b yeah <laughs> came like, out of there we got well, so well, but, but 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 in terms of like i know what you're saying in terms of scripted a lot of the storylines in those shows, they were storylines. Because yep. yes. there were people talking about, oh, I just jumped off a jet. I'm like, no, you you don't even have a car. How you right. get off the jet? Right. But, that, but is that a creative way of undermining what Absolutely, the Absolutely, because I think, I think they're thinking, we'll make new stars. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. You, you, the actors don't want to act. We'll, we'll make a star, and we'll, this person can sell the Pepsi and everything just like this this famous person can. We'll make somebody famous. But it, it'll be look. I, I think you're in for a lot of educational reality stuff because anything that's entertaining, like you said, involves a story, and somebody has to put that story together. Mm-hmm. But it also involves talent that you want to see, mm-hmm. and that's a large part of SAG. All these people that you're not aware of, the guy who hands Tom Cruise a beer, you know, he can make his break on a reality show, but if he's SAG, now he can't do that. Right. So I think even those are going to be, well, TV's going to suck for about two seasons, quite <laughs> honestly. Because if we keep going the way we're going, the spring schedule is going to be screwed too. Yeah. So now what they're saying is that they, I, well, um, Deadline released a story that they, that somebody said they want to starve everybody. They oh, want to see no. people go homeless. But, yep. I mean, is it that nasty? First of all, to say that in L.A. when we have the homeless crisis that we have is just disgusting. And yes, I think they would do that because they don't see these people as human beings. They don't see actors and writers as human beings. They see us as pawns on, on, and they want to win. Because the other thing, we talked about this, I've been talking to a lot of people about this, Back in the day, the executives came up through the ranks of entertainment. They had a love for entertainment. Now the people that are in charge are bean counters. They're they're corporate people. They're tech people. It's tech companies. It's phone companies. Right. It's a different... Their their main money, if you're a tech company or a phone company, doesn't even come from entertainment. You sell in phones, Mm -hmm. right? So there's no... Or if if you're Amazon, you... Please, he's got so much money. He doesn't care what's happening with Prime or the people that use Prime or need Prime. So it's... It's rough. It's it's literally them not seeing us as human beings. Mm-hmm. I worthy. Think, yeah, of the I think basics. if you're coming from tech, I think it's it's just a bottom line thing. Do you know what I mean? It's not they're not sitting here going, "We'd like to create th- this golden age of television." They're like, "We'd like to create gold." <laughs> like, right. For yeah. us. For us. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And, and I, the fact that they consider that an acceptable loss. That's what really pissed me off. You know, and it wasn't something um that somebody leaked to them or whatever. It was with a reporter that they said that, that they knew from the beginning that they were going to have to hurt people, but it was considered an acceptable loss. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not thinking about us as creatives. They're just, we're just pawns in their game. Pawns in their game. And, I mean, that's the important thing to realize is that no executive will lose money or their home in the course of this strike. Nope. Right? They're taking the summer off. There, they're having their, there will their be yachts, a num- There will be a number of people who will not re- recover. There will be a number of opportunities that have come up. You know, we all know how hard it is to be a person of color in this business. There are a number of people of color who are having a moment right now whose momentum is completely stopped because mm-hmm. of this. You know, it's it's that Malcolm X quote is, you know, when, when America has a cold, you know, black folks have the flu. Right. You know what I mean? Or COVID. So, yeah, so yeah. black folks got COVID. If he would have seen it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I think it's this constant battle and it, it is very clear that their plan from the beginning is to make us homeless. And I think I think they thought that we would all fall in line, and we didn't all fall in line. No, we're mad. And, and, and I think what's important for the resolve of our union members and the resolve of the people around us who, who are also suffering from this is that, you know, we got our greatest gains, residuals and things like that, which they're now trying to pay back, when we were last on strike together, mm. right? So this is a monumental movement. And this is the first time you all have been on strike together in, what, over 60 years? Yeah, since, since 1960. 60. Yeah. Since the Reagan era. We went yeah. back to the Reagan yeah, since, era. Well, since since Reagan was uh, president of SAC. Yeah. Um, so it is a huge movement, and they know it. And one of the reasons they're, they're being so stubborn, because, again, we are losing money. The city is losing money. It's because labor has become a movement. Absolutely. But shouldn't it be criminal, though, that somebody yes. that has billions of dollars or an industry yes. or yeah. an institution that has billions of dollars can actually actively try to hurt people? I mean, you would think that, but look at the government. Like, look at America. This is this is the American way. We like to act like we love and care about people, but mo- a lot of people in this country don't. They don't. So I have all the rules that you guys, they, they got so many rules. First of all, <laughs> they are all a part of shows that we can't talk can't about. Talk this about. is the first time we've ever had a show that we're absolutely not going to promote the work. So who does that hurt? Does that hurt you or does it hurt them? It hurts everybody. It hurts everybody, but this is the thing. I, <laughs> what I want you to know is that we came anyway because this this moment is so important. So where we would be here to go watch us on whatever. Watch if you can, but what's happening and what is happening to crews and to writers and actors and everyone involved, whoever's cleaning the studios is not working right now. Whoever cuts the lights on and turns them off is not working right now. Everybody is affected by this. It's this everybody is in film school. Absolutely. It's everybody watching who wants to be an actor Absolutely. or a writer or a producer or be in the business. It's everybody who 
whose dream is to do what they're doing or want to do what you're Absolutely. doing that's affected. Yeah. And, and I just need to say, I'm not going to promote my show. But I will show, say, as a black woman running a show on a black network, I worry about being there when this is all over. Right. Mm -hmm. I worry about how they're going to make us pay when this is over, how many shows they're going to cut, you know, who's going to get a shortened season. And I'm so excited about the progress that we've made. I don't want to go backwards. Right. So that's why I'm out there every day that I can be on the line, because I think we have to be seen. This strike is a lot different than it was when I was involved in 2000, 2007, what's 2007, the, the 2008. More the diversity. Us, more of us. Mm -hmm. More women. It was very white and male. I'll say that uh, the last time we went on strike. This time, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And if that goes away, if AI starts writing for us, it's going to come from a white male point of view. Right. So all our stories are gone. Mm -hmm. And that's my biggest fear. I don't want us to lose traction from what we've made. I want to continue to be able to tell our stories. And I want to hear stories about people that I've never known before. Mm -hmm. So that the difference is we're fighting for our lives, quite honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so besides not being able to promote or talk about your shows or projects, which is crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. This is usually where we go. So let's talk about the show. We ain't doing that. <laughs> Today when we were preparing for the show, they gave me all these cards. I said, just take all the show, just take all the show cards out. <laughs> you know, which is sad. Yeah. You know, we're, we're trying to make it entertaining for you to digest, but it's really a sad thing. With these folks who work hard to entertain you can't talk about it. But this is, a, this is a affecting... Um, Everybody that does stunts, acting, singing, piloting, uh, aircraft, puppeteering. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't do any of that or promote any Dancing, of it. You have to take capture. everything off your Instagram, yeah. social media. You can't. I mean, yeah. it's almost like erasure. Uh, uh, very much so. I'll be doing stand up at. Uh... <laughs> you that, no? I'll be in these clubs. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. You can promote it's, that. Yeah. That's it. I mean, you know, non TV. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's about it. Yeah. So Fran Drescher is the president of SAG-AFTRA. Mm -hmm. She seems like a fired up president. Is she good? She actually is really good. Like I, people think that her speech, her at the press con conference was something, but the national board voted unanimous, unanimously for her to for us to strike. Mm -hmm. So you should have seen us in that room <laughs> before she went out. Like it was like go for it. Like we were really, you guys in the room together? Or we were was somewhere Zoom? in the room, and then we were on Zoom. So mm -hmm. it was about I think about two hundred of us, and I don't know how many were in the room, but. Everybody was like, let's go. I I've never been on a sports team. I don't believe in exercise. It's not my thing. <laughs> but it, it felt like what I would imagine someone would feel on the, in the Super Bowl before they're about to go out for the first time. Like we were, we were behind her. We were, we're ready for this fight. It's the same thing you guys feel when oh, I visit yeah. the, the pickets. Like we're ready. When let's we go. started, we had uh, meetings with the WGA. And I have never seen a negotiating committee this fired up. We literally left there. I was ready to burn the town down. <laughs> I was like, let's do this. Come on. You right. know? Um, so I think everybody's coming from a different point of view, yeah. and they know that this one is more important for our survival. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I think it's also important to realize that it's not just Fran, right? There is a negotiating committee. Yep. There's there's tons the boards, of people. Yeah. There's boards. There's tons of people who are also working um, in tandem with her, uh, along with Duncan Crabtree Ireland, and, a, and a host, yep. uh, Duncan Crabtree Island, and a host of other lawyers who are behind the scenes. So, you know, I, I think, again, to remind the people that that's what's going on, it's important to know there's a team of people. And honestly, these fights didn't start when these negotiations started. Right. Right? We we have been fighting since last contract yep. for all of these things. So when folks go, well, you agree to that, it's like, no, we've been fighting for these things the entire, we have meetings throughout the year, you know, again, that we're not paid for. We're, we're all volunteering. If you're on these boards and you're doing these things, we're actually doing it. We're working and volunteering to ensure a better future for younger entertainers yep. and, and for ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, not just the, the, the generations after us, but the ones here, their folks are living check to check. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And so we're we're doing our best, and you know, it's it it is a rough thing. It's like I don't know, I'm I'm gonna sputter out of here, but it's it, it's a rough thing because they they don't care, they don't. and it's it's a it's very clear from what they've asked, and there's a reason why you don't see 
um, folks from the AMPTP or these platforms doing interviews about why they're not willing to negotiate further, right. about why, why they are not giving us what they want. You're not going to see reasons behind Well, the that. fight's not theirs. Right. I mean, it's the fight they created, but it's not theirs. It's just mean, like, not, not it. When yeah. AI was created, when reality shows were created, when these streaming platforms were created, they can act like they didn't know the impact. They have conversations with their legal teams about how it's going to impact, how they're going to avoid losing. They know losing. everything. They know they, they, everything. They plan the game out. Yeah, this yeah. is something that uh, Fran said, I think, in the, um, the press conference, that she was surprised to realize who we're in business with. And that broke my heart because I always feel, and I, so my heart is broken all the time with, with politics too, because I feel like at a certain point, no matter what the deal points are, or what you're upset about, I feel like at a certain point you see the humanity of the other person and you go, oh, is this the person trying to eat? You know, I want them to eat. I like to eat. I want them to eat. And so you think that that at the, when you get down to the marrow of the bone, that's what it is. And we've discovered that that's not what it is. They don't care if we eat. That's deep. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's deep. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> these things, you'll have folks testifying in these things. It's, it's actors and such pouring their hearts out to these people. Um, and as a result of people sharing stories of, you know, healthcare mishaps, of harassment, of low pay, of how this is affecting the industry, the result was rejected. Rejected. For, rejected. for tons and tons of proposals mm-hmm. that seem super simple. Well, I'll ask both of you, what can other actors, writers, showrunners, um, people that are in the industry do to show solidarity and support for the movement that you're doing? And then Yvette, I'll ask you, what can the audience do to show up and support? Mm-hmm. The fight. I think the writers and actors are doing what they're doing now is showing up and support. There are a lot of people. I have a friend who's not in LA or New York, but she called the guild and asked, What could I do? Mm. You know, there's social media representation. There's, um, I, I forget what she's doing, but you can make signs, just anything. Show support. If you know a writer who can't get out there, you know, team up with them. There are writers now who these young team captains, they've started um, grocery funds, Mm -hmm. you know, that nobody asked them to do. And they raised so much money to send these grocery um, gift cards to people just to keep them up and going. You know, they've delivered water to us. They've they've figured out so many ways. We people see all these T-shirts we're wearing. But for every T-shirt we buy, that money goes to the entertainment fund. Mm-hmm. You know, people have come up with ways to support, and that's all we want, whether it's vocally or financially, just to stay on our side and yeah. keep our message out there. I, I mean, before SAG was on strike, I literally was just going down there and giving water. I was just handing out water. Uh, I wasn't there long. Uh, <laughs> I marched There's water, I'm out. I marched. I pick it. <laughs> Um, but I mean, seriously, those those things are helpful. The actors who are doing super better um, than others give to the funds, um, help out your your fellow actors who who may not have uh, as much security uh, as others. Honestly, mm. and then for the fans who are watching, you know, I think the most important thing, and I'm so grateful that you're letting us do this today, is to change the narrative of what we're doing and why we're fighting. And so, what what the fans of entertainment can do is understand it's going to be rough. It's going to be your favorite shows are not going to be back. But just be mindful of what you say about the situation publicly. Like, make sure that you're not disparaging the fight and being anti-union. Um, because the thing is, they come for us now and they'll be coming for you later. Unions matter. I remember uh, Shirley Ralph said, you know, one of the union strikes that we had before, um, not us in particular, but unions in general, got us a weekend. Unions got us Saturday and Sunday off. And so every time there's a fight like this, something great happens. The other thing um, is just the the funds. There's Motion Picture Television Fund. There's the SAG Foundation. There's the Entertainment Fund. There's the Actors Fund. There are a lot of things you can donate to so that the actors that are really, actors and writers that are really struggling and other crew members that are struggling can eat. It literally comes down to food and shelter at this point. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's what they can do. And and if you can't afford to do these things, tweet. Tweet about it. Post on Instagram that you stand with us, that you want your shows back. Mm -hmm. You know, make some noise. That's free to do. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I would do it now 
and not wait until your show don't come right. on in <laughs> September, you know. Because then they will be dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So it'll be, be like the last years to say about a bell. It'll right. be real awkward. It'll be in Hawaii. Y'all going to come back and Lark Voorhees going to replace <laughs> you know what I mean? No, seriously, I mean, get educated. Do your right. research. You know, uh, f call them. You know, there's so many things that people can do if they care. And where the pressure is really going to come from, it's always with the people. So it's with you yes. standing with the actors, writers, showrunners, the people in the industry. But it's also, like you said, the janitor. Janitors, the people who are doing so hair. I mean, everybody that I know is affected. Yeah. If you are a part of a union, this is um, important because no matter what happens, this will be an example for whatever union you are a part right. of. Because they are trying to squash unions. Really and are. if you're a mother, your kid ain't going to have nothing to watch after school. So guess <laughs> right? what? You're going to have to be a mother. <laughs> okay, we got gifts. Uh, can we get that really quick? Oh, I love Aww. gifts. Now, I love gifts. Now, listen. These, these gifts ain't as sexy as the gifts that we usually have, but it's probably more important. Oh, uh, what? Than the gifts. So, so, okay. okay this so one's excited. mine. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Bob, I Jesus, that's right. Jesus, Bob, I right. this for you. But let me go ahead and put this <laughs> okay. right. Okay. So um, this is yours. Is this what's that? Fix it, Jesus. The fix okay. it, Jesus one isn't mine. This, I mean, I'm sorry. Okay, give, yeah, give it to me. <laughs> okay. I'll let, I'll let y'all talk y as pick. a union. Okay. okay. I told right. Chat GPT to make a sign. That's, that's you. And what's this? That's one? you. No, no money. money. You know no what? Money. That is you. That is you. That works. Oh, I think this works. This is good. You see how? You see how it was just fair to let folks share. Fix it. Okay, but could, listen, this is really big business trying to take advantage of working folks. Regardless if you're a teacher or a pharmacy tech, like I said, a janitor or an actor or a writer, being paid for fair work is just a fair thing to do. If you can get a $50 million contract ex ex extension and go on a cruise with your family and not worry about the people who are fighting every day who made you what you are, you're just greedy. Yeah. So. Trump ain't the only Trump right now. Trump is Netflix. Trump is all of you people out there taking advantage of folks. I'm glad that y'all came today to Thanks, Jay. do this. I really, I really thank you for giving us this time to do this one. Of course, thank you, yeah. man. I spent 11 years and and then left that doing the union work and then left there to join an industry where I got paid a thousand dollars to show up and talk to people who I didn't even want to talk to, and then not get any residuals. Yep. Like they still play yep. my episodes from eight years ago mm -hmm. right now. So all those advertisements that they're making money of while they yes. go. Between, I'm not getting a dollar. Nope. It's weird how common the thing of the checks with zero dollars oh, on gosh. it. We like we time. used to say it's not worth the money it's printed on. The paper is actually worth more than the check. To, <laughs> to mail it, it costs yeah. more. I, I've got, I have check. I've, you know, tweeted. I have constant zero. columns of zero Zeros. going on there. And that is a new phenomenon. Uh, you know, I, when I think about... Um, just the residuals that I was getting from like Wild and Out mm -hmm. or the other shows that I got, there was there were months where you know maybe I didn't need that extra money, but to get that th those checks, I mean now of course they're like two cents, five yeah. cents, but when, you, when you're getting six, seven thousand dollars in residuals on a month where maybe you overspend in another area, that's really helpful. That was saving my life, man. I was look, I was on TV. I, I got my first regular show probably in '03. Right. And in about 05, around 05, I paid off way too many things and was broke um, for the second time in my life. First birth, then this part. <laughs> um, and, you know, I was I was selling toner over the phone. You know what I mean? I would have robbed people, but I have money for a gun. Uh, but it helped. Your favorite actor going to be out here scamming. <laughs> right. Out here. And, and, you know, and I, 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 don't, I don't work. think anybody should. Be, uh, let me just say this. I don't know what law is governing all this. FBI, whatever. Nobody that's affected by this should be in trouble for anything they got to do to survive. Because survival it's at the end of the rough. day is, is important. It's a lot. But, but which goes to say, you know, one of the things that helped me during that period was residuals. Do you know what I mean? When it would suddenly come, that was the greatest day of my life because I was, I was doing that. I was, you know, I call it, was, it magic mailbox money. Yeah, it was, you know, it was six to twelve. I'm, I'm, I'm selling toner. I'm biking to work, selling toner, and and after that, trying to audition. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So it's. I think what's really important to realize the difference between celebrity and financial security. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I think it's things. and I think it's a, a myth that I think people have to explode in order to understand how many different types of things we are fighting for. And when you get the residuals, let's be clear, it's not a favor. It's something that you <laughs> earn. It's, <laughs> you know, it's not a favor. No, well, they're eliminating it, passive income. I used to call it my retirement money. I had a friend who used to call it his stripper money. <laughs> yeah. So Apparently now strippers are going hungry yeah. because his residuals <laughs> are falling off. Well, but that's why when during COVID, <laughs> that's why during COVID when we saw the boom of OnlyFans, I wasn't shaming sex workers because no. at the end of the day, they were they took 
an opportunity where people were losing everything to use what they had yeah, to make it. Survive. And, you know, they made lots of money from it. But but again, I feel like if you're participating in building a show like Squid Games, I'll just use that as an example, that makes somebody a billion dollars. Yeah. There is no reason why you don't have at least 5%, 10% of that money. Do you know what 10% of a billion dollars, if that person who created something that we all loved made a hundred million dollars, look how many more jobs can be created, more shows can be created. It would just unlock opportunity yeah. for art. It's the same fight that the musicians have when yeah. they, they mm-hmm. don't have their masters. They're like getting you're, paid you're, for you're, streams. Your prince creating magic and somebody else is telling you where you can play your stuff and, and giving you facet for what you created? You sat there and created? Like you said, the Squid Games guy, it's like he threw a party he couldn't go to. Right. You know, because he had an idea. An amazing idea. A lot of people got rich mm-hmm. and he couldn't and he afford to be there. And, you, you, know, my, and you know, Michael Jackson, he bought the Beatles masters and you know what happened. I mean, I'm not going to open up conspiracies, but <laughs> this the power of ownership and that ownership it's is huge. control. That's why they call it the master. Yeah. Y'all got to go back and go do back your research. Go back and do the research. It's true. Snoop was talking about it. It's like, we got we get, did billions of streams and not getting paid nothing. Yeah. No, like, well, no, 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 no. What I love about what Snoop did, see, this is where the white folks invited Snoop to come and talk about something to push their agenda, and he mm. flipped the script, and yes. he used it to talk about what was real. The fact yes. that you have a billion streams and you're not participating in any of that money, yeah. where's the money going? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you got to be careful, because when you start asking these questions or having these kind of conversations, people will start to make you the marginalized bad guy. No, we're actually unlocking the minds this of people is, who are coming this up. This is the thing, though. John yeah. Lewis said, may he rest in peace, you need to get in good trouble. And my thing is, and you know this about me, you all know this about me, if I lose everything but it's for the right thing, take it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be on the right side of history. I'm going to use the platform God gave me for good. And so I'm here, and wherever I need to go, I'm going to go. I don't care. That's just stuff. Mm-hmm. I want people to be able to eat. Mm-hmm. So we fight. And that's that on that. All right, we're going to come back and get into some messy games. <laughs> Let's get messy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now it's time to get to it. You know here at the Jason Lee Show, we love a game. And now we're going to play our favorite Smasher Pass. So right now, there's a paddle right on this oh, side. Oh, do I have one? This is really simple. This is obviously uh, pretty simple. Okay. All you have to do is put up smash or pass when I put this person's name and image up here for you. <laughs> and uh, here we go. The first person, Chris Rock. Now, if you say smash, you might get canceled like Will, so. Oh, this is rough because I know him. So I, I, he's a friend, so I don't, not a friend friend, but I know him. I'm going to say pass just out of respect because I think he's in a relationship. Okay. Uh, this next person. <laughs> I, I don't want a baby. I mean, he's very fertile. Thirteen's a lucky number. He's no, very okay. fertile. I, I wish I love Nick. Wish him the best, but I'm, I, I'm gonna let that train go on. Yeah, when he was here at the show, we gave him condoms. Yeah, I don't know if he's using. Them. I don't okay. think he's using them. Now this next person, I think I know the answer. Chris Evans. Let me tell you something. It's, it's hard too because he's also in a relationship and he's a friend of mine. But he's a handsome, and I don't, I don't play in the snow. I've never dated a white dude in my life. Never kissed a white dude. But Chris Evans is a very attractive. Wait, so are you guys like friends friends? We're friend friends. Like you can text him. I can text him. That's my buddy. I don't have any white actor friends. You don't? No, I need white. You, Because you know you black and you black black. <laughs> but you, you you white famous too. Like you got white I, uh, famous. I don't think I'm famous at all. But I, I, you know, we did Endgame together. So I met him there and he's, you know, he was very, he enjoyed my shenanigans on Twitter. Calling him on Twitter, boo. And then we just became friends. He said one day he just texted me. He was like, "You got my number now." I was like, "Okay, play up." And you know, do you yeah. do, like when you when you're friends with these people? Like y'all don't go hang out, go to lunch. He has like game nights and stuff. Yeah. Can you take me to a white after game <laughs> night? Okay. Um, this next person. Okay. Usher. Ah, oh, Usher. In my younger days. I'm old. I'm old lady. Why are we asking her about everybody who's in a relationship? Yeah, he's, he's also he's dating my friend Jen. Oh, is, oh, is he? Oh, that's nice. That's okay. You can still smash. Yeah, I mean, I, listen, my smash is like watching TV and holding hands. So, so when you little saw, baby Jesus. So Kiki Palmer was recently, when you saw her baby daddy online, what did you think of that? I am so heartbroken by all of it because I've met him, and I, I really want Kiki to be happy, and I think she deserves good love, and um. I, I felt like she found it. And I think that, I think this industry trips people up sometimes. And I think he kind of, whatever he was going through in his heart and his mind in that moment, he forgot that he was publicly shaming his, his lady. 
who happens to be super famous and yeah, super loved. Yeah, she's beloved and, and she didn't deserve that. Mm -hmm. Like Kiki's fun and Kiki ain't changed. Kiki mm -hmm. been the same person. She's always been fun loving and silly and sexy and all of those things. And I think those are the things that he loved about her. And so I think to just publicly do that was, I don't think that was right. And I think that there may be fallout that he's not anticipating. And I don't think he even wanted it to go down the way it did. I think it was just a bad moment. It's a bad moment. And the fact that she found her confidence post baby is a ch is a champion for other women Absolutely. who are struggling with that. She I didn't think, deserve any of that. I think he didn't understand the moment, right? Yeah. Like what it was. He for understands her. it now. Yeah, well, he black understands Twitter. It now. Black Twitter. Black Twitter don't play. They be like, where we going? Where we rolling? You got up? the blue check or not? Them Bloods and Crips gonna show they up. Gonna they gonna find show you. Up. Okay, what about this guy? The baby. We gonna pass you just like you passed this interview you were supposed to do. Oh, is he supposed to do an interview? We'll talk about oh, that later. Oh, you do that to baby. Probably got lost in Africa with six baby. nine. Okay, this next guy, he kind of big though. Shaq. Shaq. I kind of like Shaq because remember, remember my smash is is hanging out and chatting. I, I would love to hang with with Shaq. He seems like a sweet man. Have you been to his party that he no, does? You know, I ain't been to nobody's okay. party. Okay, he he's a DJ. Shaq Diesel's a DJ. I Aww. went to his party. The party was lit. I like Shaq. He no. seems like a nice man. No, he is. Okay. All right. This next person, I just met him in the French Riviera, Trevor oh. Noah. Oh, fine. And smart. He's smart, smart and get, just got a good heart and just funny and just, he's just good people. Yeah. I remember, I can't remember what, I ran into him at a, um, a charity event. You know, it's not a party, a charity event. And something had happened in black in the world with against black people. I can't even remember what it was because something happens every day. And I went up to Trevor. I was like, Trevor, what are we going to do, man? What are we going to do? Is it? He said, Yvette, we're going to keep thriving. That's what we do. Like, this is, this is, the, this is a Tuesday. And he's just so smooth. He's so it. smooth. He was like, why are you tripping? Like, we know what this is. We know how to navigate this. We're going to be fine. And I felt better after talking to him. So, yeah, he'd get smashed. But don't they be the most toxic ones, though, too? Who? The what? people that can smooth talk you. And no, it depends on where the smooth is coming from. Like, he doesn't seem like a, a player smooth. He just seems like someone who's very settled. He knows who he is. Mm -hmm. When someone knows who they are, they can just be like, hey, man, what you doing? Come on, baby. And when they show you who are, they are the first time, believe them. Believe them. Okay, well, this next person is recently single. I'm scared. Devon Franklin. Oh. Pray on I'm, it. I'm a, pray on no, it. I'm a, no, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pass. Because, you know, it, I, I, I think he's a lovely man. But I know Megan, and I would never. Mm. Can't do it. Mm. Wish him the best. Well, it's probably going to say the same for this next name, then. <laughs> <laughs> I know Megan, <laughs> so I'm going to have to pass. Um, I, I, You know, this situation, I don't know with this one. I don't know what's happening with this you one. You know what I will say that Megan's not getting credit for? Megan, okay, y'all remember, this is Jason Lee talking. Jonathan Majors got caught up in that scandal where he allegedly put his hands on the white girl. Mm -hmm. They, the industry was taking everything from him. He was losing everything. Mm -hmm. And who came in and saved him? A black, black woman. woman. I'm going to say this, though. I did think it. I don't know the story. I don't know what's true, what's not true. I do know she was at a club after, and the injured arm didn't look injured. I do know that. And, and she was running his credit card up, too. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. See, I, I ain't followed it. But I, but I do think that it's very interesting that this man loses everything because of an allegation that's not vetted. And but you can grab by the pussy and become you can president. By, you can, and you can, you can travel around the world still running for president with two indictments and more to come. So I just think there's a bit of a double standard here. So if you had to choose one person for president, Ron DeSantis or Trump? I am a woman without a president. <laughs> <laughs> because this is the thing about DeSantis. Is that just the craziest option, Yeah, it's though? horrible. Um, DeSantis, I think Trump is narcissistic and dumb and, and racist. I think DeSantis is calculating and sinister. I don't think Donald Trump does things from a place of, of being sinister. I think he's just a narcissist, a malignant narcissist, and a dumbass. I think DeSantis is very calculated, and I think that he would be perfectly fine trying to chart a course for everything to fall apart. Mm. If Trump could take care of himself and the country didn't have to suffer, he would do it that way. He just can't do it that way, so mm -hmm. he's making the country mm -hmm. suffer. I think DeSantis would like to make the country suffer. If uh, Trump becomes president, God forbid that doesn't happen, but Please he becomes president happen. and he gets indicted and goes to prison and is ruling from prison. So Are we ridiculous. moving out of here? Are we, we leaving We have America? to. We're, 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 we got to get out of here. We're going back to Ghana. If they, if they literally <laughs> vote this man in or find a way to trick 
to mess with the voting systems to get this man in. We don't have a democracy anymore. No. And let me be clear. I said what I said about Trump and DeSantis. I am not pro Trump. I want anybody to she likes. No, I don't. <laughs> right. No, I don't. I think they're both just horrible. A woman without a president. That's a song. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of um, white boys, what about this one? He's hot. Oh, Matthew McConaughey. I d uh, oh, I can't talk about anything. I was about to talk about something I did. <laughs> I did something years ago with him. He is delightful. He's wonderful. He's kind. He's he's smart. Um, smells good. And he doesn't wear deodorant. He doesn't. He's one of those people that's very granola. That's just nasty, he, though. No, he smells good. He, Without deodorant? His natural, and he says this, too, his natural odor is not an odor. Is he as good looking in person as uh, he is? Even better. Camera hate him. Really? Camera hate, can't stand his face. He is gorgeous in person. Okay, so if... In camera too, okay, but you know. I, I'm going to throw a scenario at you. You can say yes or no, okay? Okay. God says, Yvette, <laughs> I will put Trump and DeSantis in prison for the rest of their life, but you have to have a threesome with Matthew McConaughey and Chris Evans. <laughs> I mean, for the country. <laughs> do it for the country. I got to do it for the country. In, in, in my life and times, I will leave here never having had a threesome, Yvette, personally. But for the country, yeah, Jason. This is a sacrifice. Jason, what is that sacrifice for the country? <laughs> Hell, I would do it too. <laughs> oh, man. All right, um, this next one. Comment. Oh, Comet. Comet has dated a lot of people I know. <laughs> and it's nothing against Comet. It's just that's that's cross, that's that's mixing. So he's dated a lot of people I know. It's very so mixy. He's he's a lot of people I know. So mm. I'm gonna pass. I heard he's a nice man, but I'm gonna mm. pass on that. Go burn some incense, Comet. Yeah, okay. I'm pass on that. Lastly. Drake. Drake is an attractive man, but Drake also he got a lot of ladies. Yeah. And I need a man that just want me. I want him just to want me. So yeah. I'm pass he on. not he's not that guy. He's not that guy. Well, listen. God that, bless. That was the that was it. You you survived smash the pass. <laughs> Does anybody, anybody refuse to answer? I'm sure we've had. I mean, we've gone through. We have a we have a game called um, DMs Unlocked, where we yeah. go into people's DMs and we we did that. We almost had a full out. Uh, Problem. And let me say this, like I said it a bit, like it looked like I was smashing a lot of white dudes and <laughs> passing on a lot of brothers in real life. Flip it. Yeah. Flip it. Okay. Well, listen, thank you so much for coming and uh, gracing us with your presence and having a conversation about the strike. Yeah. Uh, it, although we humored you, entertain you and all of that, uh, we want her to entertain us back on uh, television yeah. and the movies and the films. And uh, so make sure you're supporting the strike. And if you don't know anything about it, get educated. The internet is free. All you got to do is, well, no, the internet ain't free. It ain't free no more. It's well, free. steal somebody's internet <laughs> and go over there and Google it and do some research and show up and uh, support the people that are on strike. Thanks so much for supporting. Thank you. Do you know how happy I am that I got to come and do the show? I'm so excited. I'm happy you did too. Thank you. Thank you. All right, until then, peace. <laughs>